Hey everybody, it's Christine Bertram, and I'm coming to you live from the Hive on a Thursday night for a card class. Woohoo! The first one since I've been back. Yay! <laughs> Are you ready for a fun class? <laughs> fun, quote unquote, no pun intended, um, because it is the Fun Folds class. And it's also the catalog launch party class. It's the in color class. So it is what I am coining as the Mac Daddy class of them all. <laughs> you know, like when you go to McDonald's and you get your Big Mac. <laughs> oh, so I saw it pop up. I know I'm live. Let me find myself and then we shall be good to rock and roll hoochie goo. <laughs> so, did you guys have a good week so far? It's hard to believe how fast these days and weeks just keep on cruising. Wow, we have 10 people watching. Awesome. <laughs> hi, Jeannie. There's Melanie. Hi, Deb. April's here. And hi, Linda. Woohoo! So, oh, I got to make sure that my internet is appropriately linked to the hive. I've learned that <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so it's always good to have on the right internet. Otherwise it gets splotchy. And then when you guys are watching me and thinking everything's great and then I'm not seeing it, then we're not good. <laughs> so woohoo. So I didn't hear from anybody that they didn't get their kit some time. Deb was the only one that we were uncertain of and um, we couldn't find the tracking on it and or we could find the tracking but it was lost in the shuffle and then it showed up yesterday woohoo so hi Zana. hi megan oh yes megan's in denver megan i think of you all the time when i think of or i'm thinking of fun folds or working with fun folds you are my fun fold fanatic <laughs> so i hope these fun folds are up to your standards i <laughs> oh and then i didn't turn my volume down so <laughs> Let's see if I can do that really quick. Otherwise, you guys will be hearing my Mario coin going off throughout the night, and we don't need that or want that. So let's see if we got it back here. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Judy Bobo. Here's Bonnie and Debbie. Yep, everybody seemed like they got there so far. Hi, Kay. So as you guys are rocking and rolling in, <laughs> uh, it was brought to my attention that I did have, there were some missing pieces, and... Oh, you guys, my mom tried her best last week and I didn't have equal eyes on her like I can normally do. So when I am working from home, I have my laptop set up and she's off working and I can kind of like get up and just check things every now and then. And with coming back last week, Wednesday, and then having to work two days, like I worked Thursday and Friday and I literally gave her five, it was... 68 times four and 60 times four. That's how many card kits my mom put together last week. And she had those chicken cards <laughs> with all those little cobs of corn and all the little husks and the stalks. And she said she did her best. And not to be mad at me or her, if you guys are missing anything, <laughs> just let us know if you are missing anything and we'll make it right. We don't want you to be missing pieces from your card kit. I know a bunch of you guys have products at home. You might have the appropriate paper or you might have what is needed to just cut a little piece of paper you might even have the dyes like sandy you were amazing because she was missing two strips of the dew the misty moonlight for one of the cards and her polished pink butterfly background which is crazy to miss like that much like but my mom said she did what she could to make sure that we got everything out on time and if we're missing a few pieces here and there if you can't make it work with what you have at home by all means don't post it in here though because I won't be able to necessarily come back and capture all of that. What I need is um, some order to <laughs> anything that's missing is either email me or text me. You could call me, you could Facebook message me, but all I ask is not to write it in the comments of these posts because I might miss it. And I don't wanna miss it if you guys need something. I don't always go back and watch my videos. I might spot check through them in case I see something, but. I don't want to miss anything. So that's all I ask of you is just let me know if you are missing anything and I'll make it right. Um, we learned that Holy Moses, the DSP sampler that I sent out the week before I left, was missing two pieces of the Tidings of Christmas paper. Everybody that I know of so far that has um, 
responded to me said that they were missing them so I'm pretty sure and some people were able to make it work thank you Melanie Chandler you said that you can make it work and I appreciate that but everybody else if you need those pieces of paper I will make sure to get them in your kits it just with all that was going on before leaving for Hawaii and then coming back that that this last week it, it's been a rat race <laughs> in, in a good way I mean I love it but I just don't want to ever have anybody upset with uh, missing pieces because it's not intentional it just you <laughs> you're the lucky one <laughs> so oh uh, yeah so that's just a little disclaimer my mom said she apologized and she did her best and just to be happy <laughs> that we got everything out on time <laughs> so all right well, that was my disclaimer I got that out of the way <laughs> so I also excited because I'm starting something new with this class tonight uh, I really appreciate the support that you guys give me with your orders and when you guys give me or I also appreciate the support of buying my card kits right that's awesome too but when it comes to the orders that you guys place I can sometimes end up with extra host credit. I generally do have some extra host credit, and if I end up getting extra products, like in case I think I might need more for a class, uh, then I have leftovers at the end of the catalog cycle. And I'm like, what am I gonna do? I, I, you know, I've contemplated doing a buy one, get one sale. You see a lot of demonstrators do that, where you buy one thing, like a retired thing at full price, and then you get something out of the catalog at full price, and I thought, well, I'd, that's a lot of work <laughs> to go through and figure all that stuff out. I thought, well, why don't I just start giving away more free stuff, <laughs> right? And I've decided that I'm going to number everybody. So for a collective class, like, so tonight is the catalog launch party in color class featuring fun folds. Okay, so this is a class tonight. I did it on Monday night. I did it on Wednesday night. I have it tonight and I have it on Saturday. So four classes I made 68 card kits, and out of the 68 card kits, 29 people placed orders. So about half of the people bought um, product from me to get the classes for free. So because this product is gotten because of host credit, it, this drawing is only going to apply to those people who placed orders um, within the collective class. So I had 29 people between these four classes, and at the end of each of my classes that um, that I do, I'm going to do a drawing. So one prize for every 10 people and so tonight I have um, oh actually tonight I had 26 so and I'm gonna round up so because it's over 25 I'm gonna go with three prizes so I already went through and I found some prizes and so I'll be doing a drawing and I've numbered everybody who placed an order 1 through 26 and then at the last thing we do as long as I don't forget we'll do the drawing we shouldn't forget because I have the prizes right here and then the only clip clincher the only thing there's a word that I'm looking for it's not coming to my mind but the only thing is that I'm I'm gonna do this without paying for additional shipping I'm like well I want to give stuff away but I don't want to pay more in shipping nobody ever likes to pay shipping right like it's like a necessary evil so what I decided is that the way that you claim your prize or the way that you'll get your prize is it will get mailed in the next class that you take with me so okay so that I hope that makes sense so tonight let's say that who is it I don't want to call anybody out because I don't want to give them bad vibes or juju beans is what Bonnie always says when <laughs> I have class that if I say something then she doesn't win. So let's say person A wins tonight and person A is signed up for the next class. I will mail the prize with their next card class. Until person A signs up to a, attend a class, I will leave it sit here right on my counter with a post-it note with their name and I will make sure it gets added to the next class. And because I'm already um, pay, you know, there's already shipping for the card kits to go. So then the prizes will go with the next class. How does that sound? Do you guys like that? Okay, free stuff is always good, right? So I'm hoping that you like that. And then not having to pay extra shipping to give out free stuff is also, I think, a win-win for all of us. So if you're an in-person person for me, you can get it at the next class that you come to. You can pick it up. And if you're a male person, then <laughs> I will mail it out. So how does that sound? Yay, okay, I'm seeing hearts and I'm seeing likes come through. So um, we will, um, when we do the drawing, I'll announce who wins and then I'll also include those people in my Friday morning announcement of winners. I'll have those names included as well so you can see what your winner. So yay, so exciting. Okay, so let's talk here about really quick what's coming up. So well, I gotta put these prizes in front of me. I don't wanna forget them. I'm gonna put them behind the cards that we're gonna announce who the winners are later. Okay, so we're gonna set them right there. Okay, all right. So upcoming classes. I'm gonna go through these relatively quick. I feel like we've gone through this a whole bunch. <laughs> and so you guys don't necessarily see, need to see them much more. But 
I have here the chicken card class for game night. And I'm announcing this because I still have three spots left for this class. It includes a goodie bag of including some linen thread, you get blending brushes, and you get um, a chalk marker, a white chalk marker, so that you can do the, the barn like mine in case you don't have one. It includes the four sets of cards and your chance at winning prizes. And I wanna share with you, they arrived today! Woohoo! Oh my God, I'm so excited! Okay, so prizes. This is my first showing of the prizes. So we have here five prizes because there's gonna be five, hopefully five different winners. Um, so give it a whirl, dies. Should we open them up just so you guys can see what they look like? So disclaimer to the person who wins this, um, that's oh, it's being opened so that we can show you what the, so these are for a spinner card, okay? So look at those dies, so, so cool, hang on. Hang on one second. I gotta find here. I have to. I have to show you guys. I had to go get this off my swap board. Wendy Cranford made this card, and I showed it to you guys last week. So this is the spinner card that you can make. Ha! Ah, look at the little guy. You can make this with these dies. So that's the spinner wheel, and then to go with this set of dies is the brads. So the brads are what you use to poke through here to make the spinning action. So this, and I like to put my dies on the top so we can see them. So I'm gonna just leave this out because I'm sure we'll be showing these at game night. So this is one prize. There's another prize that is all about the baby. <laughs> all for baby. So the dies match this set and I included because this is a little bit lower value of a bundle, like not in terms of value, but a price bundle, I added in a pack of the Subtles Designer Series paper so that you guys can make, whoever wins this, can make some awesome baby cards. So that's one prize, another one. Plentiful Plants is one of my favorite bundles in the catalog. Oh, we're gonna be making a card tonight with a fun fold. So Plentiful Plants is one. Tidings and Trimmings is another bundle that is going to be a winner winner for somebody. And then Art in Bloom. Um, if you guys saw the post originally, Kelly had it as Expressions, or she had a different one. And it was supposed to be this one because I already had it ordered. So it's Art in Bloom. It comes with the hybrid embossing folder and a set of dies and the stamp set. So this is one of the other prizes. So five awesome prizes for hopefully five unique winners last the, the last few times we've done this um we've had always unique winners so that it wasn't anybody doubling up on prize packages which is awesome um we are capping it at two um so it's going to be a little bit different so if you guys did game night and um were worried about your internet being slow or you were typing slow we came up with a plan so that you don't have to be the fastest fingers of the north or the south. Kelly watches everybody's numbers because I log them and she knows when somebody has it. So we know that somebody will have um, stamp, S-T-A-M-P. And so what we decided is if multiple people get stamp on the same set of numbers, instead of it being the first person who it comes through, because we learned on my phone that the first person always isn't the first person and we made it right for the last one. But what we decided is like, let's say three people have stamp all together. As long as all three people are actively participating and wrote that they got stamp, then we're gonna do a random number generator. So one person will still win the master prize and then there will be consolation prizes, but it will be a, a random thing versus based on of whose technology or internet or is fastest. So it's gonna be that if you get it, then you get a chance at winning. And then you're really lucky <laughs> because you've got some hot numbers. And then again, if you don't get the master prize, I have consolation prizes. And be happy that you got a consolation prize because not everybody's going to go home with a prize. And that's all how like um, lucky numbers and like a type of bingo is all about. So, so I have three spots left and the details can all be found on my events page uh, for getting all set up for that. Okay, so that's game night. And then for ink, so that's next week, Thursday. And then the next day, Friday, is ink, paper, scissors. And 
I have on my website that registration is full because I've officially gotten 36 people signed up and have their kits all ready, but I made some extra kits and I ordered some extra bumblebee trinkets because they just got off a of back order and they came today. And so I have enough for two more sets of ink, paper, scissors. In case somebody's wondering, um, I took it off of my website that you can't pay for it via my website because my luck is that five people will end up paying and then I got a refund. And so if you are interested, reach out to me via email or text or call and we'll figure out the first two people. If there are two more people interested, we'll make it happen. And these are the pansies. So ink, paper, scissors is featuring the pansy class. And this is next week, Friday. I think I have it at five central. So I'm gonna be going away from the five central on Friday. <laughs> I think starting in August or September, I can't remember when I switched it, but we're gonna be switching that out till just a half hour later. But I think it's set for five central. So these are some pretty spectacular. If you guys like purple and you like flowers, like then you're a uh, you're, uh, gal after my own heart. And so the bee trinkets, you'll get your own pack of bee trinkets and a whole roll of ribbon and some extra little gold cording for your cards. I didn't have enough bee trinkets to finish my cards, but they should have bee trinkets over here and over here. So, so pretty cool. So if you're interested in this, please email me or call me and we'll make it, we'll make it happen. And then the next one for June that I'll talk about is uh, the, the monthly card class. So features three different bundles, but you really need limited stamps, just some flowers, and some sentiments is basically all you need. I really went um, die cutting on these. So this is all die cutting. These little loose flowers are super cool. You get three of them in different sizes and shapes and just some flowers and a butterfly, everything die cut and embossed for you. Isn't this cool with the curtains? So um, you'll get 16 inches to make your curtains in my live on the 24th. I'll show you how to put that together. So very, very pretty. So that one I've got maybe 10 or 12 that I have figured in. And the last one, which I don't have handy with me is Beauty of the Earth. Um, the Beauty of the Earth is uh, live on July 1st. It's the one where if you're in my VIP group, you could get um, your chance in for a drawing at the bundle for half off. So, okay. So if you guys were curious and you missed it, the scavenger hunt winner um, was announced. Uh, I did a live on Sunday night. I just got kicked out. <laughs> I wonder if that's why you guys always are getting kicked out too. Um, hang on. I got to get back into, <laughs> got to get back into the video so I can see things. Okay. So if you're wondering who the scavenger hunt winner is and all the different um, cards that I gave away, go to Sunday's live in the afternoon. Hi, Loretta. There's Melanie Foy. Every other word coming through, but I'm getting just what's being said. Let me just listen. Into the video so I can oh, I hear it. I hear it. Things. I hear it. So you guys, I've got it coming through. Susan, your favorite color must be purple. <laughs> it is uh, my favorite. No um, so Donna, you just signed up today. You need to give me your lucky number. So when you sign up for my Stampin' Game Night, I need five lucky numbers of your choosing between one and 25. You just have to email me, Donna, what they are. And then I log them and then you hi. Oh, that's another thing. Anybody who signed up, you better have your five numbers <laughs> handy before we get started. We spent about 15 or 10 minutes last time trying to get people their numbers. And all I ask is that if you need your lucky numbers, ask me before we start the live. And not like 10 minutes before, like the day before or the morning of, or like tomorrow, <laughs> just not during <laughs> or right before. Hi, Arliss. Uh, you had to water your birds again. I love it. So, okay. Um, so the scavenger hunt, again, the video um, for that and all the prizes. And then I did a, uh, what did I do? Oh, I went through the scavenger hunt. And so you guys can find that. The video is from Sunday. You should watch that if you haven't yet. All right. So we talked about all the upcoming classes. Okay. Paper pumpkin, you guys. Today is June 10th. If you're not sure, sure what that means, it means it's the 10th of the month and it's the last day to sign up or to change your subscription for Paper Pumpkin. Um, yep, Roxanne, I already emailed you. Oh, you want... Do, 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 do. Okay, Roxanne, you just sent me an email for the pansy. I will check that when I get done. Um, so Paper Pumpkin and the subscription ends tonight, so at midnight um, mountain time. So if you want to cancel it or skip a month or sign up for it, you need to do it by the time, by midnight, tonight, mountain time. 
Um, it's the Expressions in Ink, which is, if you like purple or pink, it's purple and pink and then very artistic, so pretty. You get two ink spots with it. Uh, if you want more information about it, if you go to my um, June 28th on my calendar of events, I have all the details in there. So I'm doing my Paper Pumpkin Live video on June 28th, okay? The other thing too I wanted to tell you guys is I do have one left from the May kit batter up. If anybody's interested in it, it's $24 with shipping and tax. And then um, if you're local, it would be 24. If you need it mailed to you, then it's shipping is usually about six bucks. So if anybody missed out on batter up and you're looking for it, you just gotta let me know and we'll make it happen. Okay, let's flip down here. Um, oh yeah, Lynn. So, um, <laughs> yeah, how the, so how Lucky Numbers works is it's kind of like bingo, but it's an easier form of bingo to do um, over a, um, a Facebook Live. So it's really a card making class and we just pay, play a couple games of bingo and then I give away a few prizes to people. And all it, what it is is I have 25 slips of paper and they're numbered one through 25 and I start calling off numbers. And if you happen to have the number... Um, two and I call number two, then you write an S. And then if you have the second number, you write ST and the third number. And so as I start calling numbers, people are starting to get the word stamp. So it's in, in essence kind of like bingo, but I don't have bingo cards and I don't mail out bingo cards. So um, Lynn, you may have given me your lucky numbers. So it's numbers one through 25. And I think the only one I was missing numbers for was Donna, who just signed up today, and Mo, and Ma Mo just <laughs> was reading my brain wavelengths because Mo was the only other one that needed to give me her number. So I really think, Lynn, you're okay. Um, but if you're uncertain, send me an email and just say, hey, can you let me know what my lucky numbers are? And I'll reply to your email and tell them to you. Yay! So, okay. Oh, Linda, your internet is off tonight. So what you should do is maybe restart whatever you're using, your phone, your um, tablet, or your computer. Maybe just restart it and it might get better. So, sure. Okay, Technique Thursday, you guys. Did you see Kelly? I think she did. <laughs> she was over here on Sunday afternoon when I was just wrapping up whatever I was doing, and she came and made this card. And <laughs> Oh, I know it's crazy because it is probably 85 degrees outside and it is sunny, but she really wanted to show this technique with using a post-it note, and she wanted to know what to do, and I'm like, make a winter card. So that was all like yeah my little birdie was telling her who cares that it's summer and hot outside so she did she used the beauty of friendship stamp set put the little cardinal and she's got her lamb technique here on the side with her ribbon I heard her saying that adding a little bit of <clears throat> uh, sentiment here and then the bark embossing folder so just you know what isn't that a pretty card I feel like this should be a class card I'm gonna I'm gonna save this one and we're gonna do when we need um like a card buffet or if we have something in the winter time, um, I'm saving this card because it's a really pretty easy card. So if you missed that video, go to my video section on the cards by Christine Page and you can watch how she makes this beautiful card. It's gorgeous. Hi, Brenda Wood. Um, yes, Kelly does a great job. So you guys, oh, between the two of us, we both have full-time jobs and she has two boys. Um, and I've, I have, I feel, I can't say that I have kids, but I have a boyfriend and he sometimes is like a kid, <laughs> especially when he's sick. But, um, we try to make the magic happen for all you guys. And Kelly and I, we work so great together. I've been stamping with her since she was probably 10, <laughs> since she could. Hey there, Kelly, she's watching. So she does a great job and she did such a phenomenal job while I was gone. And I, I'm so lucky to have her as a partner in this crime. <laughs> it's not really a crime. This partner in this passion. That's what I should say. So, yes. All right. So, we talked about that. Just a reminder, too. Um, yeah, I wish you guys all lived closer, too, so that you could take in-person classes with me. We're always such a, a hoot. So, it's so funny. Hi, Mary Carls. We're, we're a hoot. So, Jody Storman watches online, and I met her via online. She lives up about an hour and a half from me, and she signed up for an in-person class, and she came on Sunday for my in-person chicken class. And I asked her, I'm like, how different was this? Like being in person in a class where we're cra we, we get crazy. I mean, not crazy, but it's just a lot of loud talking and women getting together and socializing. And it's just a fun time. And 
it's so good to be around people. And so she had a great time. So, so yes, we were talking, did you create the July monthly class cards? I have two of them done, Stacy. Just wondering, cause there's no photo. Yes, there's never gonna be a photo until I have them created. So I don't know if you caught it, but two days ago, or maybe it was yesterday, I uh, published the Tidings of Christmas cards. Um, I had made them before, right before I left for Hawaii and Kelly and I got them, we, I got them photographed after I got back and those just got published. But the July, let me see, I'll run over and get them, Stacy, and I'll show you guys. The, so I have two of the three done and they're cool. Uh, oh yeah, exactly, Roxanne, good call. Roxanne just said that you can also watch a past game night to see how we play. So if you're wondering how to find a past game night, there's an, a magnifying glass up at the top of my page and you could type in their game night and it should show up with different posts and one of those posts is a video. So yeah, good call. Uh, thanks for sharing. Oh, you guys, that's another reminder. Thank you so much for sharing. We have grown over a hundred people in the community of Cards by Christine in the last, since I don't know, two months or three months, over a hundred. So we're up to 2,100 already. So that's awesome. So thank you so much for sharing me with you, your friends and your family. Okay, so we were talking and Kelly just posted about the Summer Creative Escape. It's only for demonstrators or discount shoppers, same thing. Uh, and I will be designing eight cards and a sampler, a little framed like nine by nine sampler. Um, there'll be three creative demonstrations and you could be in person or mailing, so an online version. So uh, the cost is the same for both. Either you're gonna eat food or you're gonna get it mailed. <laughs> that cost is about the same. So that's how it ends up being about the same for the pricing. And so um, I'm pretty sure I'm full for Friday, but I have space on Saturday. Would like to so so Dev's like the ink paper scissors. Okay, so you guys, I think that if you're watching this video, I saw Roxanne and I saw Deb Norman comment they want the ink paper scissors. So for the pansy. So I don't believe I have any left. So if you ask me after now, <laughs> just know that I might have to say no. Uh, and I hate saying no, but uh, just I think I had two left and they got them. So so the summer creative escape. I have space on Saturday. Hang on, close up shot of the ear. So the event, if you go to my calendar, all of the details can be found. It's August, if you go to August 6th or 7th. Um, I have maybe seven spots left for Saturday for the in-person, unlimited right now for online. I would take up to 20 more people. Uh, once Saturday's full, then I'll start overflowing to Sunday. So I have it on the books that it is Sunday, but right now nobody has signed up for Sunday. And once we get some people signed up for finished on Saturday, then I'll flow over to Sunday. So Summer Creative Escape, it's awesome. If you want some creative inspiration and all the stuff out of the new holiday catalog, all the samples, all the cards, it's going to be awesome. Your goodie bag that you get is going to be all product out of the new holiday catalog. So stuff that you don't have yet. So, um, Deb, I might have put you down for Friday with a question mark. So, because you were talking about it the day that you were up here, I might have put your name in for Friday with a question mark and held a spot for you. And I just need confirmation that you want it. So get in touch with me ASAP, because if you don't want it, I want to open up that spot for somebody else. So, um, that would be good news for you, right? <laughs> so, okay. Um, the, in the works great for me, the, um, oh, in the mail, Susan works great for you. Um, okay. So Stacy asked for the class for July. So I'm going to grab that while I, I have a second. I'm going to put the turtle card down. So you guys have something to look at. <laughs> Stacy was just asking about the monthly class for July. So we haven't had June yet, but this is what I've got for July. So this is that sharing sunshine, sunshine set. And when you open it up, it has a little sun in the corner on the top. And so if you don't have, um, um, if you don't, so Chris, you're saying you have a wedding Saturday and you can't get off Friday. You know, so if I get at least four to six people signed up for Sunday, we'll make Sunday happen. So if you're on the fence about a Sunday and you're not sure, like I'll get you on a waiting list and we'll see if we can get, I just, I don't want to do the entire event for two. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't say it like that, but for two people where it's a lot of work to put on the entire event and my mom's cooking all the food 
And so I really want to have at least six people if we're going to do the event on one day. So, oh, isn't it so cute, Linda? Um, so I love it. Isn't it so adorable? <laughs> you guys know I love sunshine. So, so when I saw that set in the catalog, I just had to get that sharing sun sign. Sunday what? Sunday, um, it's in person for the Summer Creative Escape on the sub, um, August 8th. I'm just watching comments here, Stacy. <laughs> so I'm trying to reply to people as they ask comments. So Sunday, August 8th is the Summer Creative Escape in case anybody else wants to get on a waiting list for Sunday. And then here's the other one. This one's a different bit of a fold too. This uses hand penned. You guys are loving hand penned. So that's what's on the inside and then the outside. So it's coloring contour dies with the hand pens. So those are two for um, the July class. So in case you're wondering about what's being used, it's hand penned and sharing sunshine. And the other card, you guys, in case you're wondering, I know inquiring minds like to know, I have a mapped out the next, the other card is, I was going to use is in bloom. I may or may not go with that. It kind of depends. But I was thinking about In Bloom for the other card, and In Bloom was a carryover. So I have to decide. That's a lot of flower action going on. So I might not go with flowers for my third card. I might try to go with a masculine or a kid's card. So um, for the Christmas in July, in case you were wondering, uh, these are the three, the four cards for that. Now, this is the very end of July, July 24th and 26th in person, and July 22nd. But with an order now, you guys can get this class for free with a $40 purchase. So um, I'll show that to you now because it's only you can only get them free with a purchase in the current month or the next month. That's why it's July already, so next month. Crazy how fast that time goes. Okay, so we're going to make some cards. We went through all my cheat sheet. You guys, that was my laundry list of stuff here. Speaking of laundry, you guys would be proud of me. I got all my laundry done from the vacation. <laughs> So I was supposed to have date night on Tuesday, but I think Tyler was so tired. You know, it takes a week, a five hour time difference. It was not, it's been a week since I've been home, Tyler too. And that it's like you're in a funk, gog, groggy, you're eating is off because you're off by a little bit. So we didn't have date night on Thursday. I think he went, I think he went home and he went to bed. I don't know. I like talked to him for three seconds and then he had to go. And I'm like, oh. So I cleaned up the kitchen, I cleaned up the bathroom, I cleaned up my bedroom, I did all the laundry, I emptied the dishwasher, and holy Moses, it felt amazing to have a clean house. <laughs> so I think you guys can like, like, like understand that's such a good feeling. So now when I walk into my kitchen and the counters are all cleaned off, it's like, oh, a breath of fresh air, yay. <laughs> it pays not to have date night every now and then. We had like three weeks of a date, so that's all right. So, <laughs> all right, are you guys ready for some fun folds? <laughs> okay, so I've done this class twice already. We did it on Monday, we had 10. And then I think last night we had 11 maybe, and it was amazing, it was really good. Everybody did really good with these. I haven't done these fun folds in a while, and actually I'm so excited because I showed some of these cards to you as swap cards uh, in the past, and I might have mentioned, oh, I'm going to do that for a fun fold. Well, it's time. To, so two of these cards I've shown you in the past, or even three of them probably, and I saved them off to the side until it was time to design. And I thought, wow, when I'm designing these cards, like, how am I going to pull this out of my butt? Like, we're doing a launch party, and we got to feature the in color, like we as in me, I got to do in colors, and then fun folds, because normally for my in-color class, I do five cards, they're all the same style, and I just use all five different colors. Well, that doesn't work with fun folds, and you have to do four different cards. So <laughs> that's why I was saying this is like the Mac Daddy class. I was so proud of myself when we got done, or I got done, I should say, when I got done. I say we a lot, but I, it was just me uh, when I got done making these four cards. So we figured out what the names of them are as well. So there's an exploding gatefold, an interlocking gatefold, a fan card, and then there's a gift card that has like, a, you can put a gift card or a money holder in it. So, we're, so it's so cool. I'm so excited to go through They did really good. Um, for your card kits, again, if you guys are missing anything in it and you don't have the ability at home to, to make up for what is missing, please email me or call me or text me or Facebook message me 
and I'll send you, I've got a ton of kits going out tomorrow. So if you are missing something, I can just put it in with kits tomorrow and then we will make the magic happen that way. So what one do we want to do first? Um, do we want to start with the hard one? So they're not really hard. We're going to get warmed up. We're going to do the butterfly one first. So um, I featured four different bundles. Oh yes, Chris was here last night for class. So featured four different bundles and five different ink colors, four different folds, and it was a lot of fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you all the different things that I use. Oh, you guys are also gonna be proud because hey, look at this. I gotta make sure that doesn't fall. <laughs> they always say the last five minutes before you have to do something, you get the most done. And right before class tonight, I labeled all of my tabs on my catalog, which was a tip Tuesday from what month, a month ago. I said, I can't go live <laughs> with these not done. <laughs> Cause you guys be like, well, why does she teach us this stuff? And then she doesn't do it herself. So butterfly brilliance, page 106. I want to show you guys where this first bundle is that I'm using. Oh, quiet meadow. Um, we're going to have to remember page 110. Okay, so Butterfly Brilliance. So a couple of the stamp sets that we're using tonight were carryovers that you saw previous to this new catalog. And some of it, they are new bundles. So the Butterfly Brilliance was introduced in, I think, May. Nope, actually April, so a month prior. And so in this one, this is a stamp set. Hi, Holly. So I um, cut mine apart so I could easily stamp butterflies. And then you save these little pieces if you want. Oh, these are perfect for, I got a Tip Tuesday lined up for you guys that we can use those little schnibbles. So Butterfly Brilliance, and then there's some matching dies here. So there's the outline, and then there's all the detail. So you guys should have, we'll go over what you should have in your kits. Um, you should have all gotten the PDF tutorial for this on Monday. Oh, and before we keep going, you guys, I got to do roll call. I like to tell you who's all with us tonight doing the class and give you a shout out. So we've got Sandy Wicklander, Meg Burke, Deanna Stell, Kathy King, Kathy Beck, Melanie Howe, Leslie McMinn, Faye Godby, Jeannie Parker, Bobby McPherson, Kay Warren, Lynn Beasley, Jeannie Terwilliger, Danny Olson, but she might not be with us. She's not feeling so good right now, so she's gonna catch the replay. Ann Bellinger, Mo Stites, Angela Knutson, Susan Risch, Mary Carls, Barb Barkow, Jody Storman, Deb Norman, Pam Newhauser, Rachel Horsch, Jennifer Jones, Linda Hodge, Luann Johnson, Bonnie Gravelin, Ruth Nicholson, Gwen Petrashek, Latokia Trigg, Debbie Schultz, Lisa Lewis, Brenda Wood, Michelle, I have a hard time with your last name, Ouellette, <laughs> Ouellette, Donna Dress, Judy Bobo, Brenda Keppel, and April Drain. Holy Moses, 39 people are doing this with me online right now, and I had... Um, 68 minus 39 <laughs> do this in person with me. So this is one of my biggest classes. 68 kits were made. It's crazy. So, okay. So let's flip back down. Um, we have here the butterfly brilliance. I did also bring in for some people that wanted a birthday card. Um, so I have the sentiments that I used for my two samples here were from pansy petals and Kelly actually has it. Hi, Patty Stebbins. Um, Kelly just borrowed it because she's working on mystery card. Um, but on the inside of the birthday, I pulled in Let's Celebrate You, uh, which is from Celebrate Sunflowers. So I am going to be making a thank you card though so that the winner, winner chicken dinner gets a thank you card for me. Uh, <laughs> and so let's get these guys out of the way and grab some stuff. So what you guys are gonna need for this one, and let's move this book. Oh, let's get it set up to page 110 so that we're ready for Quiet Meadow. Okay, so you guys are gonna need some black ink. So the Memento works great for that. I pulled in polished pink. That is your ink color. This is the little baby butterfly that I cut its poor little wing apart, sad face. It didn't get hurt though because it couldn't feel a thing. I brought in Oval Occasions Punch. So that's where the scallop comes from and the solid smooth oval. And I'm gonna do Thank You from Pansy Petal. So I did stave out the thank you. You guys should have some black Mac dots in your kits. Let's see here. And then let's see if there's a diamond. So then there's also diamonds. You guys should have a big diamond in your kit. So let's set that off to the side. We'll need that in a second. And what else? Okay, the ribbon. It's the black organdy ribbon. It's so pretty. 
you guys, in the holiday catalog, they're gonna have a white organdy glittered ribbon. So this exact thing, but with white instead of black. So you could color it, so cool. All right, I'll need a little scrap possibly for mine. So let's grab the card kit here. So this one is what we're calling an interlocking gate fold. And so that's our inside. So it's interlocking, meaning that it gets locked by the butterfly's wing. And then when you open it up, it's a gate fold and you'll have your inside. So the trick with this one is that you want to make sure you don't attach your little butterfly wing to that. It's only attached down here. And then your panels get attached only on, if you open it up, they're only attached here, here, and then here. You wanna make sure you don't put any glue in those spots. So let's get to town here. All right, in your kit, let's confirm. <laughs> we'll go over what you have. You should have a black, basic black card base. Uh, it is eight and a half by five and a half, and it's scored at two and an eighth from each end, because two and an eighth and two and an eighth equals the four and a quarter. And when you fold this, what I do is I fold one side. So it's scored for you. So you should be able to just to flip that one side in, grab your bone folder, burnish your edge. And now the other side, I flip this around. So I'm a righty, so I like to work more with my right hand. So when I fold this over, my thing is that I don't want it to just overlap this layer. And depending on how I score it, that determines that. So what I always try to do is I bring my lip down like that edge and I have them align right in the center. And then regardless of what this looks like over here, I take my bone folder and I go up with it and then I go down with it. And now I know that they're not overlapping in the middle. The seam just comes, they come right perfectly together. And that's what you want with this one is just for them to come right. So this is what you have with a gate fold. So this is the gate fold. Okay, done with the bone folder. So then you should have in your kit three pieces of polished pink. So in person, somebody had four. So I know that... I had to cut another one. I don't think anybody should be missing these, but you should have three polished pink rectangle mats. You should have a polished pink butterfly, which is the under part of this overlay. <laughs> so your detailed part is in basic black. Now you're gonna have these little things hanging. I did not sit and pick out all your stuff for you. That wasn't gonna happen. So you are gonna have to take your picky tool and pick all any little particles out of your butterfly um, circle spots there. So you should have your detailed die cut, your polished pink, you should have about nine or eight inches, I think it's eight inches of the black organdy ribbon. You'll have your scalloped um, oval, and then you should have a white oval smooth. So those are those two pieces. And then you'll have this designer series paper. Now this comes from the True Love designer series paper that is retiring. So it's while supplies last at this point. And there's the daisy and then the polka dots. And so you're gonna be gluing those on. You should have a white piece for your inside, okay? That needs to get stamped though before you get glue happy. So just hang tight. Hi, Randy from Southwest Michigan. Okay, so let's do get a little glue happy because we can glue. Now here's the thing, you might like the stripes better and that's all right. You can use whatever you want, you guys. Just remember that I have the class card challenge. So if anybody either paid for these kits or um, got them free with an order, you can go ahead and take pictures of your cards after you have them done and submit them. And I do a drawing. I gave away two prizes this last month. Uh, Feline and Deanne both won prizes and they are going to be mailed out tomorrow. So I like the liquid glue. So I'm using liquid glue because I can kind of wiggle it around. I can get it where I want it. And then you're gonna to wanna to glue all three of your designer series paper mats down onto your polished pink. Okay. You guys, the air conditioning is fixed. So I don't know if you watched my live on Sunday. I was heating myself out and I had a very shiny face. It was 81 degrees in here. The hive was hot. <laughs> so I got my air conditioner installed back last fall like right before it got cooler so I never turned it on and all the air the refrigerant leaked out and so when I went to start it on Sunday night no not Sunday night Friday night before class with 10 people and it being 90 almost 85 degrees here 
It didn't get cold, so I'm just gonna put, oh, you know what, before we do this, hang on, hold up, let's Stella this. So it's always easier to Stella before you put it down. So let's Stella. So grab your Stella. Stella is a glitter brush, so let's Stella this little beautiful black butterfly. Uh, so uh, apparently when it, so there's a, a pipe and then there's a bracket on it and they expand and contrast because my unit is a heater and a cooler. So when it's hot, it does one thing, and then when it cools, it does the opposite. I can't remember which is which, I'll be honest with you. I think when it heats, it expands, and when it cools, it contracts, or it's the other way around. Okay, either way. Um, and if it doesn't do that all winter, it'll just do one, and it leaked all, I guess it leaked. <laughs> and, uh, and so there was no refrigerant in it, and so sad face, we roasted ourselves out. The, everybody that was here was a good sport. <laughs> we, we had nobody that didn't make it the whole time. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue. And I think I'm going to actually put a little bit on the tips here just so that the whole thing gets glued because you're going to be opening and shutting this a lot. And so you don't want this to get pulled off because it's not on there tight. So yes, we, we had some hot stamping this weekend, but they came on Monday on my lunch hour. I was actually able to meet them and they had it fixed in a half hour and we had it down to 70, 64 degrees in here. <laughs> Not really. We had it down to like 68. <laughs> 64 is kind of cold. So, okay. So you got your, your butterfly glued. What we can do is we're going to do a little stamping. So um, we're going to grab a piercing mat and put that here. Now I am going to put thank you. So the pansy stamp set is all photopolymer. So I will be able to see exactly where I'm stamping. If you don't like how you stamp the first time, it's always good to practice on a piece of paper, but I feel pretty good that this is gonna go where I want it to. If you don't like it, you can always flip it over and do the other side. And because it's a thank you card, I like to leave them blank on the inside. And I leave them blank so I can write really long love notes. Now this is a red rubber stamp, so I'm gonna take this out because I don't wanna risk getting halos. Um, hi, Susie Snow. I got your card in the mail on Monday. I'm curious, did you get it? Oh, Lynn, you didn't get the pink. Okay, so Lynn, you gotta do me a favor though. Please send me an email and I will, you have a kit going out tomorrow. I will cut you a piece of pink, but can you send me an email, text me something? Like right now I'm in the middle of this and I don't wanna forget. So um, I'm writing, or I'm putting the pink butterfly up at the top so I can write like dear so-and-so and then the little love note down here. Now you could also put your butterfly down there. You could leave it blank if you don't wanna put um, the pink butterfly on at all. But I just stamped a polished pink butterfly on there. And because we wanna make Brandon proud, we're gonna clean these two stamps. So you guys, look at this. I made this card so that mostly everybody could do it. Um, oh, you didn't? Okay, well, you're very welcome. It should hopefully arrive soon. I, I got it in the mail on Monday, so I was very proud of myself. <laughs> so um, clean your stamps when you're done with them, and then um, very minimal stamping. All the outside is basically a sentiment, and most everybody has sentiments so that you could put whatever you wanted on there. So, so Lynn and anybody else who is missing this pink butterfly piece, please send me an email. My email address is here. You can text me to... Um, I want to get it to you, so just help me out, though, by keeping it all in, like, a correspondence type thing where I can get back to you right after class. So I put a little bit of glue here, and you're going to just have to wait till you get your pink piece to put your butterfly on. But otherwise, you can almost get your whole card made. So I'm curious how many people were missing pink. And I know that... Um, um, so I know San, Sandy was missing hers, but I'm curious, like, I know that Anna cut... She cut 68 of them, or 60 of them, and then I cut eight more, so not quite sure. Okay, let's glue the, the panels on. So we mentioned about that you only wanna glue on one half, and so when you're putting this down, just be aware you do have an eighth inch of margin all the way around the edge. I know a, a one person in class glued it all the way up to the top, and we took heat, and I think it actually Chris, not to call you Chris, but Chris was here last night. We got the heat tool out and we fixed it. But just remember that you're only going to be gluing this, this left underside and you don't want to go over half. And so we're going to put just a little bit of glue about like that. Okay. So do that. 
and then hold this down and you've got about an eighth inch margin all the way around like that. So make sure the top, the sides are all about the same. And then what you're gonna do is the same for on the bottom one. So just on one side, about halfway over, and you're going to do that same thing. Eighth inch margin all the way around, top, nope, not top, bottom, left, and right, okay? So get those nice and glued, and so now you're making sure that you don't have any glue back there. This last one with the pokey dots, same thing. Halfway, and then liquid glue, and then I'm gonna, <laughs> guys, I'm a righty, so I do it the opposite. So I switched it around, and now you're gluing the side. And so hold your pieces down, and you've got that eighth inch, hi, Gwen! You've got that eighth inch margin on the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. So just try to get it as straight as you can. Okay, so now you've got this thing going on. And then let's do a little more gluing. So we're gonna glue the white little oval onto the black scalloped oval. So this punch did carry over. It was introduced here. So I already had your stuff punched out for you. Hi guys, you can see me, there you are. <laughs> um, I already um, punched that out for you. So it was carried over from the mini catalog into the annual catalog. All right, then so you have these things left. Now you have some black organdy ribbon. How would you attach that? My advice is <laughs> when in doubt, use tear and tape. So I'm gonna rip off about that much and I'm gonna put that right in the middle. So it's about, it's not longer than my oval. And so that's gonna be the first pass of my ribbon. So your tails are on the right side. So I'm gonna run it through the middle. But now if you try to go like this, there's not any tear and tape left. So you're gonna have to grab another piece of tear and tape. And I would put it right over the top of this one and you're gonna weave this back. So grab the end and then pull it so that you've got a little loop on the left side and then you're gonna cross them slightly like that, okay? And then the back side of your oval, I'm gonna get it good with dimensionals. I'm gonna get it, this is excessive, it's a lot. I'm putting four big dimensionals on here, but the reason I'm doing it is because I want these dimensionals to hit not only the ribbon, but the paper. I want it to hit everything. I don't want this thing popping off at all. And if you only hit the ribbon, it might not be secure. Whereas when dimensionals hit the paper, they're gonna stick really good. So I'm centering it basically the left to right and then in the center and it's a little bit crooked. So we're gonna bring it down a hair. <laughs> okay, so, so far so good. So you still have that. <laughs> now the trick is with the butterfly. So the butterfly, I want to attach it so that this top left wing will help keep the card closed. And I want the bottom wings to be attached to this. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna grab a dimensional and put a dimensional here at the bottom, right? And then I'm gonna put liquid glue underneath this other wing. I don't wanna put another dimensional over here, but I want it to be really nice and secure there so that it doesn't come on it, like become detached. So the glue is gonna hit the oval and the dimensional is gonna hit down here. And I'm gonna put it at a slight angle so that if you look here, let's see if I can get that pulled up one-handed. <laughs> yes. So this other wing, the right wing is below. Thanks for sharing, Randy. And then this top wing is above. Okay, so give that a second. While that's drying, if you need to trim your tails, you can. My mom cut them at four, um, eight inches. So if you fold it in half, that's four inches on each side. And depending on how big you make your loop, like if you think your loop is a little bit too wide over there, you can try to pull it. Oh, I don't know if it'll go. Oh yeah, a little bit, not much. But if you don't, like if your loop is too much, you could always take a little bit and like jimmy it in here like with a glue dot. So if you want to, here's an idea. So in case you guys have your, too much of a loop on that side, then you could always take a glue dot and put a glue dot right there and then just wedge that in a little bit. And now that'll stay. And it just made my loop a little bit shorter on that end. Okay. Now on this end, 
you can either, so in this card I made the more like this way and that way. And on this card, I think it might be cool just to leave it so that you have them both going the same direction. So two different ways that you can cut your tails. See the difference? That one goes that way and that, and then those are both facing the same direction. Okay. All right, then you can, in your kits, you got a diamond, a big diamond. So be very careful opening your kits. These little diamonds stick everywhere. They're very staticky. So I did put a little diamond right there. And you should also have in your kit two, um, three black dots. And I know they're really hard to see, but on this card, I have one here, there, and, oh, there's two down here and one up there. So what I tried to find were the flowers that that would work good to have two offsetting and then one by itself. So you either got, I think you got two bigs and a small. So let's see here, like one could go there, one big one could go here, and then a small one could go over there. So I just added a couple of the black matte dots to the center of three of the, the daisies. Okay, and that should be everything that is it for this card um if you <laughs> it seemed too easy so oh yep and there's the inside okay so the trick with this is to shut it you do have to pop the little wing back down there you can't just shut it and expect it to stay so it's important that you know you pop that wing back there this guy's gonna be hanging just a little free like that but otherwise the card does stay shut um if you want to stand it up, actually, do you see how that bottom one, because that kind of pops out, it helps the card to stand up and down like that. So, yeah, very cool. Okay, I think we did the easiest one first, I'll be honest with you. Um, do you want to know where the inspiration came for this card? I have all four cards that I used. I cased four cards for this class, and uh, three of them were from other people. Isn't the black and the pink cool? So think of black and pink, but... Think black and purple, look at this. Okay, so this is a card I cased. It is my own card. You can tell I have my recipe in here. And um, this was from when the butterfly paper was available during celebration. We had glimmer paper then, we had those sequins then. So you guys, I cased one of my own cards from three years ago, we figured it out. <laughs> so it was Gina Bulo and I made this card together. And so that opened up. And then that was the inside. So it was Butterfly Gala, I think. So you guys, I went back into my archives and I found, and that's when they had those little wood ele um, wood elements or wood trinkets were uh, one of the accessories that you could get during celebration. So thanks for sharing, Susie. So, so if you like the black and pink, think black and any bold color, black. And like this is Highland Heather. Uh, you could do like an orange color. You could do Pacific Point, anything that is cool with the black. And this paper is retiring. So this black and white paper is re retiring. Yes, I'm casing my own card, you guys. So I save one of my samples. So every class that I do, I save a, the set of cards that has the recipes in them, which they're somewhere. And then I actually go back and I go through my little boxes and I, I find cards to case <laughs> that are my own. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so that's that's the butterfly so woohoo we got one down under our belt it was good you guys we're warming up to getting to some of these more technical cards so we're gonna switch over to quiet meadow where are you quiet meadow you're right here lots of stuff in this little container so quiet meadow is one of my favorites Yes, Angela, the black and purple. You guys know what purple's my thing. Look, purplicious. Okay, so God, give me some purple. All right, so I'm gonna try to make sure that doesn't fall off my table here. So Quiet Meadow, thanks for sharing, Mary. Um, and who, oh, Dorothy, what is the size of the DSP? Dorothy, the size of the DSP is, um, go back to this card, because they're the same. The designer paper was one and three eighths by three and 11 sixteenths. So one and three eighths by three and 11 sixteenths. Three of them you need. You can make them all the same. You can make all of them different. 
Okay, so quiet meadow. So you probably are thinking, gosh, more flowers. I don't need more flowers. Like I need, like I need a hole in the head, but look at the dyes. Oh, you guys, the dyes are so pretty. There's two little butterflies in here. There's a couple little, a label and a tag. And then you have all of this foliage. I don't know, these are for something. Uh, hyacinths maybe? Like that's what those look like, but so much fun foliage. So you guys gotta give a round of applause to Anna Rebidoux. She took <laughs> a whole box for me. So did Pat Torres, but Anna did this one specifically. She took a whole box for me while I was gone to Hawaii and she die cut all your pieces for you. So she did all the die cutting. I'll show you in a minute what the kits look like, but we're going to be using the words from here and these little splotches, the thinking of you. And then we'll be using this flower right here. And so I just, the dyes are awesome. Page 110 is where this bundle is. And what do we have here? So I, let's pull out here. So this is the card we're going to be making. This one's gotten some love. Uh, it's a fun fold in the sense that it opens up like this and you can tuck money so this and it actually pulls out but you don't want to pull it out but just to show you how that works so as you open the card it <laughs> thanks dev yes anna is a rock star uh once you pull this out then you can tuck a 50 dollars bill in there if you got a hundred you can send that you can put a gift card you can put a little tea bag if you wanted so so this is the card we're going to be making so i've got this is all the stuff that anna she die cut all that for you and your little labels um, my mom cut the ribbon and put it together. And where do you, where do we case this from? So I just want to show you where I got it from. Linda Zaleski. I don't know if she watches or not, but she was part of my winter creative escape. Um, and Melanie, you just messaged me about the pansy class. So I'll have to see once if I can make that happen. Oh, I think I can. I just remembered that I have, I think I can make that happen, Melanie. <laughs> I just had a moment. I know I made it like, I made four extra kits, but it's the bee trinkets. And I actually bought three extra bee trinkets. My mom saw them today. So I might have three. Okay. Anyway, side note, like a squirrel, you guys. So um, there was a meme. There was a meme that it said, I don't have all my ducks in a row because um, something about my squirrels are all over the place. And so that's exactly what happens. <laughs> it was squirrel. <laughs> okay. So this was Linda Zaleski's card. And this was the darling donkeys. And then... So that's, and you know, guys, I had to take it apart to look at it and I kind of pulled it apart and a little tag on here. So Linda Zaleski, great card sample. That, that's exactly what I cased to get my card, but two completely different cards because of all the different colors and the different stamps that were used. So let's see what you guys have in your kits for class. <laughs> be careful, B-E-E -E, careful. There's so much stuff in here, okay? You better have a bunch of stuff, okay? So nothing looks normal in this except for this piece right here. And it's not really normal because it's not folded like you normally would. And so we had to fold your cards to get them into your kits, but I want you guys to make sure everything's lined up good. So when you fold this over, like we don't burnish anything, we just fold it. So you still wanna go and burnish your edges really good. And then you may wanna Hang on. <laughs> oh, man, I got mine scored wrong. Dang it. <laughs> oh, it's not good. Okay, hang on. <laughs> I got to rescore this. Hang on. We got to get the little scoring tool out here. So, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I should have um, looked at that beforehand. So, <laughs> let's see here where this is actually scored at. <laughs> you guys, I think that yours are right because they had to be right to get folded. It's at three and a half. So... <laughs> Your score line is at, let's get that out of the way, three and a half. So let's do here. We're just going to score this the right way. <laughs> so your score is at three and a half on the one side. Okay. And then the other is two. Okay. So three and a half and two. In case inquiring minds want to know, this card is 11 inches by four and a quarter, which is standard, but your score lines are at three and a half and two. We just roll with this, guys. So now when you bring your two up, <laughs> same concept as the gatefold. I bring them to meet in the middle so they're smooth and like just right rolled up to each other. And then I bone fold that way. Okay. <laughs> I know yours were scored, right? Because they would not have fit in the card otherwise. Uh, they would not have been right. So, okay. 
So that's our base that we have. That's probably, a, that's gonna be easy, right, for us. Okay, also in your kit, this piece right here. Oh, I didn't score it because I wanted to show you how to score it. Okay, so it's scored at, let's grab the handy dandy ruler. So it's scored at two and a quarter, two and an eighth, two and an eighth. Okay, so I didn't, I wanna show you how to do this. So sometimes you guys get my kits and it's all done, the scoring's all done, but then you don't necessarily learn how to do it. So my whole concept on this one was I didn't score it so I could show you guys how to score it. So the first time I did that, I brought out my trimmer. Now I'm gonna bring out this. This is the board that I actually use to do all of my, my scoring when I score your card kits. This is called the Skim Simply Scored. You know what, what is the name of this fold? I call it a gift card holder. And somebody, so Judy Bobo is asking you guys, what's the name of this fold? If anybody has the name for this fold, let us know. I just call it a gift card holder um, because it fits a gift card. Um, it, yeah, I, I, I don't, I, that we didn't come up with anything in class. So it is scored at, so this piece is seven inches and it's three and a half inches wide. So it's seven by three and a half. It's scored here at a half inch. So all you guys have your, your half inch is already scored. I hate working backwards in the corner here. So I always try to work out here in the open space. So I just, it was at seven and I scored at a half inch back, which is six and a half. If you're on this side and wanting to, it would be at a half an inch. So it's just, there's a little half inch score right there. Then we just measured and the white piece here is two and an eighth. So, <laughs> good, <laughs> two and an eighth. So I'm gonna go back two and an eighth. Again, I could have come over here and done two and an eighth, but I already scored a half inch on that side. So, so you have two and an eighth here and you have half inch. Doesn't matter where it is. It's just one side's at a half and one is at two and an eighth. Okay, so scoring tool, fabulous tool. All right, so. Let's see here. Hi, Anna Rabideau. All right, catch the replay. Matchbook, matchbook fold, love it. Cause this is kind of like a matchbook. Okay, so we're calling it a matchbook fold, Judy. <laughs> okay, so you guys have this piece and you have this piece. That's your outside and your inside. Okay, you're probably wondering what this green piece is for. So this green piece is for you to put right here and it's meant to make it look like your flower is growing out of grass versus growing out of white. <laughs> so that's what this is for. In your kit, you should also have a piece of this gingham designer paper, which is from the Pansy Petals DSP. Um, one and three quarter by four is the size of that. So one and three quarter by four, that goes on the outside of your card kit, or on your card. You have a piece of ribbon, uh, that's about six inches or five and a half inches, that'll be on the front. You have this piece right here, which is for the front of your card. It measures four by three and a half. So that's gonna go on this right here. You wanna make sure you keep it horizontal, not vertical when you stamp. Then you have a little label that's cut here. It's from that same die set, the Quiet Meadow, that's gonna go on your front. Now, what you've got for bits and parts. So those dies have one that looks like this and one that looks like this and there's two of them. And then there's a butterfly that's in your kit. And then you'll have this piece of saffron that's die cut and this piece of uh, freesia. So the in color that I'm featuring here, well, there's two actually, well, three actually, the evening evergreen, succulent, and then freesia. So these we're gonna have to cut apart and put on here. This one we're gonna cut apart and put on. And we determined that this we think is parsley. So that's what the gal said last night. So that one, you might just have a little bit of pokey pokey to do. <laughs> Anna, Kathy's saying thanks for all that you did for us. You're amazing. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> so those are what we're going to put on the front of our card. So where do we want to start? I want to I stamp first. Let's get some stamping done. So the stamps and colors that you need, the stamps all come from the set. The colors I'm using are Fresh Freesia So Saffron and basic gray. Oh, we're done with that, so let's put that away. So we're gonna stamp, we'll do the basic gray first. So got one here, here, and these two. Okay, they are red rubber stamps. My table's pretty smooth, so we're gonna go for it. 
um, and not grab out any kind of bottom. <laughs> We're not stamping over the edge, so we should be good. So this right here, so what you wanna do, this little lip folds backwards here. You can see it's folding back. So we're stamping our, oh, I don't want to get that in the ink. I would have to pull my hair. Um, the flower. So ink that up with, a, I did basic gray. The gray kind of was a cool color and these other colors were cool. So it kind of went with it. Okay. So you got your gray and I did this at a little bit of a slant. So I'm about a quarter inch down from that score line and I went more to the left. Now, if you want it right in the middle, you could. You guys can decorate this however you want. It's whatever you want somebody to see when they open up the card. So I'm gonna stamp mine off to the side like that. So we're gonna do that. And then the other thing that's in basic gray is our little label. So what I told everybody in class is practice, 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 and then I also told people to practice on the back side, so I just flipped it over so I can get a feel for what it's gonna look like. And so I was over to the left a little bit, so to make up for that, I'm gonna go a little bit more to the right this time, and I might end up with it getting centered then. Good, okay. So practice on the back, figure out what you need to do to make it right, and then go to the front. Okay, so that's all for basic gray. So that last card that we did with the pink, I didn't feature the new in color ribbon, but on this one, that's where the, it's the new in color ribbon that we're using. And then we're also pulling in some of the markers. So if you don't have these two new markers yet, you guys can use whatever you want because you might not even have the stamp set. So you might end up doing some other flower. Okay, so stamping on the outside. Now this is where I want to make sure I get a piece of paper because we're gonna pull this down here. You can see it's off the grid. So. You're gonna grab this and we're gonna start with the yellow. So if you don't have this word stamp, find something else. You're just creating a background. You're just making a washy background. And so I have this one with words. <laughs> They're words, it's like growing in the garden. If you're using something with words, just make sure you stamp it right, not upside down. My saffron pad is pretty brand new, so it's pretty dark. And I don't want it that dark, so I stamped off to get second strength. And the first one I'm stamping to the left and the top. I'm going to ink up again, stamp off, and now I'm going to the right a hair and then centered. And then I'm going to ink up again, stamp off, and go to the right and then down to the bottom. So I created this little stepping stone of words at an angle down. That's it for the yellow. Then we're gonna grab the Fresh Freesia. Gotta clean that little guy. Okay, Fresh Freesia is for the dots. So these dots are really sharp at first strength. So I'm gonna stamp off. And now this is where I go, da 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 da. <laughs> In class, that's what I tell people, da 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 da. So it was second, so second, third, fourth. <laughs> and then Again, like wax on, wax off. So second, third, fourth. You're just creating a little splotchy background. And what I made sure to do is my second strengths weren't next to each other. So I did, I did a second strength there, a second strength there, and I did one there. And the third and the fourth really doesn't matter. And if you want more, I wouldn't do another at second. I might go you know, stamp off and then do another one there. And if you want just a little bit more, you could do one like that. So you can add as much or as little splattery background as you want to, to give whatever background you want. So that was Fresh Freesia in color. Let's do washy washy of our stamps because that's all the stamping there is on this card. So it's basically making yourself a kind of a textured background with whatever you guys have. I can't wait to see what you guys have because I don't know if a lot of people have this Quiet Meadow set yet, but there are stamp sets from um, Stampin' Up! Past <laughs> and they have words like that and there are splotches and there's flowers. So I know you guys are going to come up with something for your kids. Did you see that I gave up on keeping that side clean? <laughs> can't keep it clean the whole time. All right, so we're done with this and this and this. So what we can do next is the coloring. So I'm gonna do a little bit, so we'll open this up. You can see it. I didn't even color the bottom. <laughs> the bottom gets covered up, so you don't even need that. You know, I always say don't, you know, waste not, want not. So 
don't waste your time doing something if nobody's going to see it, right? So nobody's going to see underneath there unless they pull it out and critique it. So if you give your card to somebody who likes to take things apart and check them out, they might pull that out and say, oh, she didn't finish coloring her card. Well, that's okay. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be seen. So, so I'm just filling in the leaves and the stems with a soft succulent marker. Now, if you don't have this exact green, you could use watercolor pencils. Um, the chalks aren't gonna work so good. These are such little areas. You definitely need something with a fine tip on it. Um, but try to remember to get the whole area. And if you're uncertain about what needs to be colored, flip that over and you're gonna be able to see, okay, I hit everything that I want green. Then you're gonna grab the freesia and color in. So on this case, I used the little one for that little bud, but I'm gonna grab the thick end to do this guy. And you could, if you wanted, um, do, if you like to do the blending with the dark and the light, go for it. But this small of an area, I'm not going for it. I'm just gonna get her done. <laughs> so, oh, there's Karen Braxton. Hey, it was so great to meet you too. I'm worried, okay, so you guys, people have been asking about the retreat that I'm doing up in Oshkosh. And so I'm planning to do the Winter Creative Escape. I have the dates booked. I know what weekend it is. It's not the like first weekend. Um, so whenever the catalog launches, it's like that first Tuesday, The my Winter Creative Escape is always the weekend preceding that because I do two day shipping on everything. So I have it in time. I do a lot of prep work, crazy busy ahead of the game, so that where you can have it right away when the catalog launches. And I'm just waiting on the Hilton to confirm. Um, the get, Kelly just won't call me back. Kelly, I gotta, I should be more persistent and call her every day, but I, I don't have time for that. <laughs> so I gotta call her back and figure out what the dealio is, why they haven't confirmed it with me. So, okay, so we've got our coloring done. We've got our stamping done. You guys, we have coloring, or um, assembly left and a little stelling. So we're gonna grab these things right here and we're gonna stella them. As long as we got our stella nice and handy, stella this purple flower right away. So if your stella needs to be rejuvenated, just give her a good, oh man, oh man. Okay, I forgot. So I always squeeze on my hand. You see what I just did here? I squeezed it on my hand so it didn't land on my project. Kelly just filled these up with rubbing alcohol. And so I was expecting it to be half dead. Hang on. Wow, I have a glittery hand now. Thank goodness. Uh, okay, so that's why you guys, um, you never want to squeeze over your project because that's what would happen. So I always squeeze over my hand because I can wash my hand off relatively easily. Um, and then it didn't ruin all my papers. Okay, so literally Kelly was here Sunday and that's when she aired or um, videoed Technique Thursday with the, the that wintry card. And she... Oh, or was it the Thursday before? Whatever Thursday she was doing alcohol wipes or alcohol blending with you, she refilled my Stella's because she had the rubbing alcohol here. So I wasn't expecting that. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Callie. I love that they're nice and she's rehydrated. <laughs> um, okay, I would also Stella this one. Yeah, look at me all sparkly and stuff. Hi, Kathy Cornea. Okay, so my Stella is juicy. Okay, so... Let's get our parsley or our whatever this is, celery. I think it's parsley. Let's get that stellet up too. And if you really, really want to, you could also do, we could, you see mine got stuck here and I just went with it. <laughs> I have to trim that, make that nice. So you could also do the bottom portion. Don't do the green top part because you are gonna end up throwing or um, covering it up. So let's do this guy then too just the stalks on this one and maybe the stems up there. Now, there's a little bit of poking that needs to happen here, a little pokey tool action. So I noticed right there and then on this guy right here, there's a couple spots that need it as well. And I think that might've been it. So I noticed on mine, I got him caught in the, the cutter here. So I'm gonna just smooth that out a bit, I guess, like that because you do see the stems, you see the bottoms. So, all right, then what next? Okay, well, we have, we have the scissors in our hand. You guys are gonna have to take and trim off this bottom stem right there. 
So flatten that out like that. And then what you're gonna do is put some glue on the back of this. And that gets glued onto the stem. So what Anna did is she cut out a whole green stalk and then she just cut out the same thing but only the top of it. So that fits right on top of there. So you guys got the two, basically it's the same die getting used twice. Okay, so that's ready to go. Then this one, so what they told me in class last night, it was easier to glue this down and then snip the little yellow, but I don't know, let's see. I think that we're gonna snip that one and that one and this one. And that should just give us this piece right here. And then just flip that over and put a little glue behind those. If you really, really wanted to, you could cut that bulb off. This one up here, and I didn't. You could, though, because there's a little stem there, but no one's ever going to notice that. So go for it. Just put it right down onto the green. So this is... <laughs> so Cheryl called this Frankensteining it. So we're Frankensteining this. We're cutting it up and putting it back together. So this one right here, I'm going to just trim off that side. I'm not cutting my finger, I promise. So a lot of you guys were... Um, concerned about my well-being with my tip Tuesday uh, and the paper cutter on Tuesday. <laughs> not one, not two, but maybe three people were worried that I was going to cut myself. And I appreciate that. My mom would probably be very happy that I have uh, concerned individuals for my cutting of my hands. <laughs> um, so the arm on my Fiskars is a uh, it's a, a boingy thing, it, like, re, it, it springs up. So it's not like it could fall. Sometimes I had a guillotine where it lost that boinginess and it wouldn't stay up. Well, for that one, you gotta be really super duper careful that it doesn't fall back down on you. But the one that I had for my Tip Tuesday, it was brand, it's brand new. And so as soon as you cut, it springs right back. So it springs up into action. So. Yeah, Judy was concerned. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of you guys were like, oh my gosh, is she going to cut herself? <laughs> you guys, I've been using a guillotine cutter like that for probably since 2003. Um, so I've only nicked myself probably a total of five times or less throughout those 20 years. And I'm like, I'm, I get my fingers out of the way. <laughs> okay, so we got that ready. And now let's go to this piece right here. So we're gonna switch gears. I'm sick of cutting apart Frankenstein there. So you have your ribbon here and you're gonna see a lot of times now they have these dies where you can run the ribbon up the sides. And so what you're gonna do is fold your ribbon and poke the tail through on the left side. And then you're gonna make sure it's flat and then fold it and then poke it up this right side. So you're basically pulling it up the ends. Okay, so that's how we're getting that ready. So it looks like that. Now the most important thing with this though is you're not putting adhesive in the middle. So right here, you don't want adhesive right here. When this card shuts, I designed it so that your stems will fit down here and they help hold the card shut. Otherwise it might like pop up. So I created two tracks on each side and nothing in the middle. And I do tracks because I don't want to it like to contend with the ribbon. And when I say tracks, I mean I use the edge of my, let's get my glue scissors, which is not that one, this one. Let's see if this is better. Oh, this is about the same. So I'm gonna, so about whatever, a half inch or so. So I'm gonna grab this little piece right here. And then this is gonna go there. And then we're gonna do the same thing underneath and then on the other side. So just cut yourself some strips. Oh, there we go. Strips of adhesive for that ribbon. So the ribbon is kind of, it can go, it can hit the ribbon. That's okay, your ribbon's not going anywhere. But I'm putting the smooth side up. And then now, so we basically have got four pieces of dimensional, two on the side, two on the side, and we've left the middle open then so that our stems can fit there. Okay, so now you can peel these guys off. And we're gonna set that. You wanna center it top to bottom, left to right on your gingham piece. So something like that. 
Oh, <laughs> and then it didn't go. <laughs> yeah, and then it didn't stay. Okay, perfect. No, not, that's attached. Now, we got to make sure our tails get tucked down. You know, the last thing you want to do is glue this down before your tails are tucked. So, we're going to grab our tear and tape and make a tear and tape sandwich. So, grab the waxy paper off the back and now what I always do is I look at it from the front and now that the tape is back there I just kind of tuck my tail behind so I can see exactly where it's going versus guessing. Grab your tear and tape and get another piece, two pieces, and then that's going to go over the top of the ribbon. Now if you wanted to you could make the whole length of the side here but I'm going to finish off with the liquid glue so we're going to just put a line on the top and the bottom. Oh, let's go put some in the middle for good measure. And I'm sticking to it. So this is gonna go at the bottom, on this bottom panel. And so that should fit right in there with about an eighth of an inch on each side. Something like that. Okay, so that's the bottom. Our top now can get glued. So this is gonna get glued right there. So grab whatever glue you like. I'm like, oh, Karen, thanks. I'm glad that you like the design. This one goes here. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so apparently I cut my um, white piece too big as well. So we are going to make this happen by cutting it down just carefully. So this was three and a half. So that means that this needs to be three and a quarter. <laughs> this is where the baby comes in. Very handy, you guys. We can make this work. So... We need this to be three and a half. <laughs> I'm going to pick the side that has the least amount of glue. And I'm betting I have it at three and a half. Yep, so this needs to be three and a quarter. It's okay. We're going to do an eighth on each side, guys. <laughs> okay, so, okay, hang on. We're going to get this. I'm going to put my finger right there. There, okay, so there's an eighth. <laughs> We're making this work. Oh, Jamie, you just got your dies. Awesome. So three and a half is... Well, let's just see. Hang on. Yep, it's got to go a little bit more. So that's three and a quarter. It needs to go three and a quarter right there. Okay, so boom. All right. See, it's okay to glue things and then have to cut them shorter. It uh, happens to the best of us. So now I'm pretty sure I test it out. Oh, it needs to be more. <laughs> Hang on. Let's see what this one is. Did I see? score that wrong you guys no it's the same thing how does that look so like it's too big maybe not we're just gonna slap it on here right let's just get it on here we'll be good to go oh yeah it's all good nice very nice okay <laughs> it looked like it was bigger than it should have been okay we got it guys we're back in track here okay all right so that's good all right you guys are waiting for the magic to happen so let's do our innard okay so take your green piece we're gonna glue this down. So, a little bit of glue, a little dab will do you, as Jimmy Buffet would say. And then this is gonna get glued um, to here. Make sure you're flush on the top and the sides if you can. Uh, if it's a little long, make sure you trim off your green. If it's a little short like mine is, don't worry. Um, I think that I cut, in class, everybody's came down pretty close to the end. It doesn't matter. You don't see that anyways. So the main thing is to have the top flush. I wanted it to look like the flower was coming out of grass. Okay, I don't know if I did the bone folder on this, so we're gonna bone fold that. Okay, we're gonna insert this in. So, last night it was perfect. Judy Immel came to class and she had some 1 8 inch tear and tape. So Stampin' Up's tear and tape isn't 1 8 it's actually a quarter inch, and that's okay. What we can do is we can cut it in half. The other thing you can do is, some of you guys have that red sticky tape that's at an eighth inch, that's perfect. You don't have a lot of wiggle room. So if you look at this, there is about, what, is that a quarter inch on each side? It's three eighths inch on each side. So if you put this down, it's gonna be a really snug fit. If you use liquid glue, you have to make sure you stay all the way to the edge and don't like have it ooze out or ooze in. Just know that the, the more that your tape comes in, the less that this is gonna go in and out very smoothly. So what I like to do is I'm gonna take my tear and tape and I'm actually gonna cut it in half, guys. Yep, you can cut your tear and tape. Um, I wouldn't try to rip it in half, but if you're strategic about this, you can get your tear and tape cut in half. Man, things are flying. 
So then you're going to put it as close to the edge without going over. And you're going to put this one in the same spot. So you see, by cutting your tear and tape in half, it made it so that you've got a good eighth inch on each side. Tear and tape is a very permanent tape. So you should be good with this. Um, if you wanted to put a couple little dots of glue, that wouldn't hurt either, but your tear and tape should create a nice seal or a nice bond. So let's just, so you press it down good and then that wax paper comes off. If you really wanted to be secure, you could also run, now that the tear and tape is there, you could use your liquid glue and just add a little bit more, but not so much. So that's gonna make it <laughs> really secure. So you guys, so what I did is I put a little tear and tape and then I put a little bit of liquid glue. And now you're just gonna set this. I didn't use a lot of liquid glue because I have the tear and tape, but that little bit of extra glue will help make this so it shouldn't fall apart. So the heat from your fingers will also help to set that glue, which is awesome. Okay, so now you've just created yourself. Oh, it's a pocket card. So um, matchbox card or it's like a pocket card because it's like a pocket. Okay, so that's what you could call this as well. So now this should be able to slide right in here like that. So here's the trick now to make this happen. This needs to get centered left or, you know, now top to bottom, or if you're looking at this way, left to right. So you've got the same amount of purple on each side. So you're gonna want this to be able to fold. So you want this all the way up in the crook here, up in the nook, okay? And then tear and tape or liquid glue, either one will work. We're gonna do both, I think. I hate it when um, cards fall apart. And when you do fun folds, it's very, like there's a lot of movements and back and forth and you don't want, you don't want your cards falling apart. So in this case, I'm also gonna just reinforce with a little bit more liquid glue. <laughs> Make it good, stick good. Okay, now all you're doing is shutting this, okay? make sure that sticks good. So while that's adhering and gluing, we're gonna work on our outside. We're gonna grab this parsley first and you have to make sure you don't put any adhesive on this bottom portion of the stems. So um, this little ball -y thing at the bottom is kind of half on, half off. I'm gonna leave that so that it's not glued. So I'm gonna just put a little there, some right there, some right there, little on the stem, not so much up here but just a little. So that's about what I've got going on for glue. Okay, he's off to the left here and hanging down. He barely fits underneath the tag here. So keep that in mind while you're putting this on. So it's something like that. All right, then this one's next. I did put a dimensional behind here. So I'm gonna actually do two. These are paper pumpkin dimensionals, I can tell. I mean, I'm gonna put three actually. So these three, and then we gotta do a little glue action though. So, oh, did I pop that up? I did. So a little baby dimensional fits right on this one. And I did pop it up. So that's got that going on. And then we got some, the leaves are glued down and then this little guy's glued and just a hair down there. Okay, so that's what I've got for adhesive back here. And then this is to the right more. Keep in mind where I've got the glue going. So something like that. All right, there we go. Okay. Then the last one, I have the, oh, Brenda, I just got your message. <laughs> this one's got a dimensional and a dimensional. So we're going to put that back here. So these little ones are perfect for this. Well, this one I'm actually gonna cut in half. You know, even the little ones can get cut in half. This is only if you want it popped up. Like I've got a couple people that don't like popping up things because they don't want it so bulky in the mail. So you can definitely leave the dimensionals off. But for this one, I'm popping up just a few things. And then we're gonna add, we're gonna add a little bit of liquid glue to the rest of this. Keeping in mind that the connection down here is hanging down below, so I'm not gonna do all that. I'm gonna go, come on, glue work with me, and then that little guy, okay. So, I did not give you a purple one to cover up this green bud, because I covered it up. <laughs> I figured if I covered it up, then it was okay that 
it's green. <laughs> you, you would never know that it's green back there. So, okay. And then we gotta get this guy secure. So in your kit, so on my card, I have a disclaimer. I've used three pearls there and then three there. That would have been six pearls for everybody. When I designed this card, I'm like, oh, pearls, lots of little pearls. And then I realized, well, 68 kits times six, that's a lot of little pearls. So instead of three little pearls in everybody's kit, they got three little pearls and a big pearl. So the big pearl was intended to go on the big purple flower there. And then you have three little pearls should fit nicely in the yellow flowers, the saffron flowers, and those. Okay, so there we go, that's our outside so far. Our butterfly is secured with, what do I have back here? Oh, a dimensional on the back of the top wing, just way at the tippy top right there. And then I used liquid glue under its body. So don't be afraid to use multiple glues when you're putting on pieces. And so that's gonna go where the body is on the purple flower and then the wing is up above hitting the white paper. Okay, so far so good. Let's look and see what we got going on on the inside. I think the inside was actually done. Once we got, um, thanks for sharing Latokia. Once we got that glued, so now this opens like this, look at that. Okay, so now here's the thing though guys, you can't just shut this, it's gonna bend it. So you gotta feed it and then push it down. The more that you do that, the easier it's gonna get to the mechanism of it going down. And just know that the, the messier you are with your glue with it going over, it's gonna be harder for you to open and close it too. So you gotta be very good with your glue on the sides. And then again, if you pull this out way too far, it's not gonna wanna go right away. So you gotta use your fingers here and kinda lead it with, your, you know, lead it by pushing it down. Okay, then the trick for putting your stems in, you can't just jam them in there. You kind of got to work with it. You kind of fold this and then you bend them and they slip right in there like that. Okay. Voila, as Kelly would say. We got it. We got her, Otter. Okay, so make sure. Now, here's the thing. If you end up putting dimensionals over this whole thing, your stems aren't going to sneak in there very good. But because you created that channel, your stems should sneak right in there. So, ha, you got two done. You guys, two done, woohoo. Okay, so fun folds, I know that fun folds class always takes a little bit longer. <laughs> so yes, it's a good thing you guys watch this before you do it because I have a lot of little tips and tricks that I did for when putting these together. Okay, so that card's done. Let's sneak him back by the pink, two done. Okay, we're cruising right along. Ooh, what's next? Okay, we're gonna do Diane's card. Diane Rongi did a swap card for the customer swap. The card's by Christine, customer swap. Mm -hmm. So Kelly just said, Kelly Bird just said you could definitely put a sentiment. Absolutely, you guys. If you wanna put a cute little sentiment here or even a sentiment here, that's all you guys. Definitely go for it. Um, I didn't because I didn't know what I was putting in here. You could stamp a butterfly, but yeah. The sky's the limit with stamping some sentiments in there. So um, and just know that you got to be very careful so that they don't bend when you put those in there. Okay. Hi, Shannon Kemp. Okay. We're going to do this guy next. So this is Diane's card that I cased, Diane Rangi. Oh, I loved it. I so, You guys, so you might have been with me watching when I opened this card up live and I didn't even see the inside. And it's called an exploding gatefold because it's like, whew, boom, there it is. And she used... This is some designer paper, I think, from two years ago. I can't remember the name of it, but she used the um, art floral dyes and the, the art floral flower. So pretty, so pretty, so pretty. So I cased it, guys, and I came up with this one. So it's the same layout. I even used the same dyes and the same stamp here, but I used all different papers and colors. I added a belly band. I didn't add as much at the top here, but... Oh, and then I had it on the upside down. <laughs> so, and mine's like that. So, exploding gatefold is what we're calling this one. So, let's get everything. Oh, we got a little Houston. We have a problem. That needs to go like that. Okay. So, let's grab our sample here. What well, I've got, this is art gallery. So, this was from the mini catalog carried over to the annual catalog. 
and I won't pull the page number in the catalog. Oh, here are all my cards. Nice. So if you guys just go to the index, you can find Art Floral. Um, that's where the name of the set. You're going to need, uh, so Pale Papaya is what I featured for the new in color, but I also pulled in Misty Moonlight. Misty Moonlight is um, last year's in color. That's a good for one more year. The only thing that we had to do in class is we die cut everything. I die cut all these for you. So you guys, be very careful. When you're opening your kits, there's a little J top thing here. I made sure every one of you had this little baby J topper here. So if you don't have it, you're gonna have to figure out a marker maybe using a blue marker, but it's in your kit, I promise you, that that little piece is in your kit. <laughs> I put each one of them in there myself. <laughs> All right, and then you should also have two opal rounds that are used on the flowers, the center of the flowers. Okay, let's get to business. We need, though, um, happy birthday. I wonder if, I wonder where it went. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta think about it. So, oh, you know what, we're gonna do thank you, though. So, let's see if I've got, thank you is right here. So we're gonna make this one a thank you card. Okay, perfect. Boom. Kit. In your kit. Okay, this is another one where you're going to have to like maybe refold things because when we put it in your kit, what we did is we folded it like this and all we did was fold like this. So if that's the case, what I would recommend you do is open up your card just like it's folded, but open it up and make sure everything's lined up good and then burnish it. And then when you flip it over, this is where you want to make sure that your seams line up. So I'm making sure that this is smooth and then take your bone folder and give it a nice burnish, nice crisp crease, okay? So always recommend doing that after you guys get your kits for me to open them up and just make sure they're all lined up good. In your kit, you also have a piece that's designer paper. So this comes from the hand penned set. Hand penned has about four patterns that are all florally prettiness. <laughs> I did say that. <laughs> okay, let's just, oh my goodness, look, I can find the page here. It's under DSP, right here, DSP. Hand penned is very florally, right down here. So some of you got that pattern, some of you got that pattern, some of you got that pattern, and some of you got that pattern. So I gave you a basically a quarter sheet of a 12 by 12. So it's four by eight. And you only get three of these or four of these out of a mat, depending on if your card is, your print is vertical or not. So some of you, I had to split it up between a whole pack. I still went through like three or four packs, but some of you got all those different colors. So that's why yours may say that three times fast. Yes. <laughs> that's why some of yours might not be this exact pattern. But like, if you look when I open this one up, so the back of this one, is pink. This one, the back, is purple, but they still look really pretty. It doesn't matter what it is. The patterns are all cool. So, so you have this piece. You have your designer paper. You guys have a piece that was folded like this in your kit. Okay, that's your belly band. You have, I don't know if it was nine and a half inches of ribbon, maybe. Now, you should have two pieces like this for your outside panels. You should have two pieces like this that mat on top. You'll have a piece of Misty Moonlight and a piece of Whisper White that mat on top of each other. And then you have this piece from Color and Contour that's white that you're gonna stamp um, the flowers on. And then I didn't put yours all in a little baggie, but I did put mine in. I was nice to myself. But that's that little J topper. You guys, all of your stuff was put right in here and it should all be in there. So just be very, very careful opening up your things, open up your envelope. So, um, Kathy, you didn't get your DSP? Are you sure? Oh my goodness. I cut exactly the right amount. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Kathy, if you can hold tight, send me an email and I will put a piece in your kit that's going out in the mail tomorrow, okay? So don't just find something. If you want it to be the exact, I will make sure that I send one with you in your, um, you got the ink, paper, scissors mailing out tomorrow. Okay, so you guys, this is not your traditional size. It may look like it, but it's not. This card would be too hard to finagle if you left this at eight and a half. 
It just doesn't work so good. So it's really five and a half by eight, and it's scored at two inches from each side. So it's scored at two and six, or two from each side, doesn't matter. So this piece of paper then is four by eight, and then it's scored at two inches and six inches, or two from each side, okay? So same kind of concept with this. When you, you're gonna fold this, you're gonna, okay, perfect, Kathy, I'm so sorry. Um, we tried, <laughs> but I'm so happy that you could find something to use so you can get your card done. So you're gonna burnish both sides, meeting in the middle here. Um, the misty moonlight, so Deb, yours are missing. Oh my goodness, I, you guys, quality control was not on her A game. So I, I didn't have eagle eyes on my mom. So she did apologize in case you missed it at the beginning of the video. She did greatly apologize for anybody that was missing anything. And she said that she did her best, but I wasn't there to like handhold her like I normally am. And she had a lot to do. So, so, um, if you guys are missing paper, just send me an email or, um, text me, let me know. And I will tell you measurements. If you have something that works at home, that's fabulous. So I will give you guys the measurements so that if you have something, you can cut something quick. So for that one, Deb, you're asking about the misty moonlight. That misty moonlight is um, five and one sixteenth, or you could do five and an eighth if you wanted, but I've got it one and nine sixteenth by five and one sixteenth. That's what it is. So if you want to go up the sixteenth, you could. So um, nine sixteenth is, could be, um, five eighths. So that at least, so, but, but I do just to recap, I did one and nine sixteenth by five and one sixteenth. You guys are awesome. So I'm so happy Deb, that you have the misty moonlight and you can use it. So, okay. Where do we want to go? Let's glue. <laughs> Let's, I always like to get pieces glued together if we can possibly do that. So, so Susan didn't get the misty moonlight. So Susan, if you don't have misty moonlight, at home and you can't, um, you know, if you need it, let me know. You have ink, paper, scissors going out tomorrow as well, I think. Please send me an email or um, text me, just let me know. I'll make sure I add it with your kit that's going out tomorrow, okay? And then we'll get it, we'll get it all squared away. Now, if you have it at home and you don't mind cutting it, thank you. My mom says thank you, I say thank you, we all say thank you. We wanna get your cards made. Um, and if you want to wait for me to send it, I can. I just need an email or a text. Because honestly, with the posts, you guys, this is going a mile a minute. <laughs> so, oh, Susan's cutting it now. Two thumbs up to that. Awesome sauce. Okay, so we're just doing a little bit of gluing and putting things together so that we have less in our workspace here. So I'm just going to flip both of those over as well. And then we are going to attach these guys to the front of our card. The panels that are in the front so just doing a little glue action here we're getting glue happy guys it's okay right now because there's nothing that needs to get put underneath so you've got so the reason I did the 16th guys instead of the 8th is because it just shows you a little bit more of the pale papaya okay so that's why I did the 16th on those if you would go a hair higher or like a little hair bigger you'd see less papaya if you go a little hair smaller you would see more papaya. And I liked it right like that. <laughs> okay. So the other thing we could, so that needs a little stamping. This needs stamping, but let's work on assembling the inside. So this right here. So that's what we're going to work on. That's the magic of this card, the exploding part. So you have here your, your four by eight. Okay. It's scored at two on each side. That's all the scoring that's done on this paper because the rest of this, you guys, are gonna do yourself. I'm gonna teach you how to do this. What you're gonna do, it doesn't matter which corner you start at, all four corners need to be done. You're gonna take a corner, so I'm starting with my bottom left, and you're gonna take it and you're gonna fold it up. You want your corner up here to come to a nice peak, nice little point, and then you want this to be flush. So you see what I did is I'm lining it up with the top okay so this is the top and now it's folded all the way up and you're going to take your bone folder and you're going to burnish it okay so you've just taken one corner my i started with my bottom and i went up so bring it back down bring it back down y'all now i'm going to take the other corner and i'm going to do the same thing 
this is you guys, you're gonna get done with this. You're gonna be like, oh, that's really simple. It's really easy. The getting your corners to be very peaky <laughs> is the best part here. And then flush. So you saw what I did there. I made a very peaky corner and now this is lined up. It's not overhanging. The closer you get to this edge, with that being straight with your folds, the more successful and the better this card will turn out. So you've got now a, an X here that's basically made, okay? Now you're gonna repeat, repeat. So do the same thing on the other side. You're gonna take the peak, get it as peaky as you can, and have it flush on the side here. Take your bone folder, give it a nice crease. Okay, now repeat, other side. Take this corner and flip it up. Get your nice peak and then flush where that meets. Okay, you guys doing okay? Give me some thumbs ups if you got that okay. Burnish the edge. So now you've got six score lines on this piece of paper. You can kind of see it better from this side. So you've got a diagonal, a diagonal, and then right there. A diagonal, a diagonal, and then the middle. Okay, and now you've just created this diamond in the center. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Okay, so you guys got that? This is where the fun part happens. This middle part here, so on that up and down score line, you kind of pull that up and it folds like that. I, trust me, it, it works that way. Take your bone folder, burnish it again. Okay, now the same thing happens on the other side. Take that up and down score line, kind of bring them towards, you know, together. And then as you pull them together, that folds down. Okay, burnish them. This is your exploding part right here. Okay, so some of you, your pattern does not matter. The pattern is interchangeable. It doesn't matter if your paper goes this way or this way. But some of you, you have stems that go up and down. That's gonna be important when we glue it down. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we wanna put this in here, right? So how do we wanna do that? What I would do, I take liquid glue and I'm gonna just put on one triangle. My left one. So let's look at, make sure I've got it facing the right way. It's good. And so now what I'm gonna do is center top to bottom and flush with your edge of your card. So I'm guessing you guys, I'm, it doesn't matter if you're centered or not exactly on top to bottom. What's most important is that you go right to the edge like that. And you're only gluing this little baby triangle right here, okay? So now, to do this side, I'm gonna put liquid glue. You guys, tear and tape would work too, whatever permanent tape. You don't wanna use tape runner. It has to be a permanent in nature kind of thing, otherwise fun folds, they will come apart. So now this is going to get set down and then just close the flap right over the top of this. Now give it a good squeeze here so that that glue will bond to the paper. At this point, it could be upside down and it wouldn't matter because you could go like this or you could go like this. So it comes important when we glue our inside in actually. Now, for my samples, I actually didn't glue this middle part down. I guess you could. Um, if you want to glue it down, all you gotta do is jimmy, uh, squish in some little glue here Right there, you could just put like a little dot of glue there and that'll help secure that. I, I, all my samples, I didn't do that, but last night in class they were talking about doing it. I'm like, oh, it's a good idea. It's nice. Okay, now, <laughs> see, this is so fun. Like, I, you was, and it's not hard, you guys. It's not complicated, okay? As US Cellular would say, now, so your belly band. These score lines were a general guideline. What you wanna do is take it, so that your score lines are kind of on the left and the right. Hi, Jody Crouch. <laughs> so this is gonna flip over 
and then this is gonna have to roll over the edge. It's not gonna quite be right on the score line, so don't force it. What you're gonna do is get that one rolled good and then that one's gonna go there. And so I've kinda of got it set up where I want it and I'm gonna put liquid glue. And then don't squeeze this together so tight that your belly band has a hard time going on and off. You kinda of just wanna roll it around it, or I should say wrap it around it so that it meets nice and square and let it have a little wiggle room. There's Kay Warren, how are you girl? So, just a little wiggle, and it's so easy you guys, this card is not, like if, if you ever sign up for a potential fun fold swap card, this is a good one, Diane, you hit them. I don't know where you got the idea from or if you came up with it, but I love it. So, okay, so you got your belly band, and now for our, and you guys, I really practiced on this first. This was some scratch paper, I did not practice on designer paper first. I, I really practiced on this piece of copy paper. That is a tip for you guys. Always practice on paper that you don't care if you ruin it. And that's exactly how I practiced on that little piece of paper. So our belly, our, our ribbon. So I took tear and tape and put that right over the center of our belly band. And I'm gonna prep myself one more piece handy here. So then start your ribbon on the top because you don't want to see a seam back here. So you're going to start that right here. And then I've got my tear and tape prepped to go right over the top of that. Come on. I thought it would go easy, but it, it won't. Okay. There we go. Okay. So that's got some more tape on the top. Now you're going to just pull this around and then just lightly pull it and then attach it. You can trim off if you've got a little bit extra, just trim that little tail off. And now we've got, we, we've got the base pretty much all set, ready to go. And we've got this that needs to go on and we've got to do the inside. So we have a little stamping. So let's get stamp happy then. Okay, so that is Papaya and Misty Moonlight. And we're going to do a thank you card. So the trick with the thank you on my inside, so you guys remember here, it's a diamond. You want to stamp your sentiment diagonal, not horizontal or like that way. So, and I'm not going to pull up my piercing mat. I've got that piece of paper down there. I'm going to go for it without it. I got a pretty juicy pad. <laughs> we're going to go for it right there. Thank you. Nice. Okay, that gets glued onto here. All right, okay, but now I <laughs> should have pulled it out anyways. For my flowers, I really want them to be nice and crisp, so, and they're photopolymer, so I should have just pulled this out. <laughs> anyways, we've got pale papaya, and with, there's two stamps here. There's a more solid, and then there's the detail. And I'm gonna do the more solid one first. Both are at first strength, okay? So I'm gonna ink this. Let's grab our sample here so you can see. One is off on the top right. So something like that. And then the other one is in the bottom left. Like that. And then you're gonna grab the more detailed one and ink that up. That's gonna go right Oh, I kind of just hover it over the top till I figure out where it needs to go. And you're just adding a little bit of definition. So, little story about mine. If you can see that my detail here has a little bit of a reddish undertone. If you guys recall, I had an art floral class back in March. And we did Mary Merlot flowers. My photopolymer stamp became Mary Merlot colored. And when I created these cards, my stamps had a Mary Merlot undertone to them. And so when I first started stamping my cards, they got a little bit of a pinkish undertone to them. And then now that they've been being used, it's they're back to being orange. So you can kinda see they got more reddish and then they're back to being pale papaya. Okay. 
<laughs> Angela, you got glue happy. Hey, it happens. <laughs> okay. All right. So Mary got glue happy last night on this next card that we're going to do. Mary got glue happy. And hers was its own original creation too. Okay. So we got our stamps clean. So that's good. <laughs> I know who did that. That is, um. you guys see the flower here? I don't know if you can see the color from Kelly. She did that paper strip technique. <laughs> That's this flower. Okay, so these are done. I think I can get this bucket out of here. So let's make some room here. Okay, back to business. So we are gonna put this down on here. I would not recommend um, any kind of foam dimensionals. It's already thick, like it's thick. Like by the time that all got put in there, you don't need more dimensional in here. So we're just gonna use tear and tape. You don't want your tear and tape to be longer than the white scallop thing. So what we're gonna do is go here. And so I'm putting tear and tape and I'm doing two strips of it because I want it to be partly on the ribbon and I want it to be partly on the paper so that I'm capturing both of those mediums for it to stick to. So if Diane Bogenhagen was here, she would use her pick tool to get this off and not her nails. She does that and she's got it down to a science <laughs> where she just takes that little tool and she wedges under and then she can peel it right off. And that works good. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Sandy. Okay, so then this guy, you're, okay, so make sure your belly band is where you want it. Well, honestly, as long as you've got this, these, these three little humpty humps right there kind of are the center and I think they're the center and then I'm just going left to right centering it okay now that tear and tape is really permanent so that will stick on there really good thanks for sharing Brenda all right so that now goes like that now if you have a hard time putting on the, the, the belly band back on the card I do recommend just lightly folding it like kind of squeezing it together and then as you're putting the belly band on they'll make sure that you're not like getting the ribbon all messed up okay I got tear and tape going on on my finger or somewhere okay okay <laughs> the part that everybody likes the least all right the just want to say I'll be honest with you that's not people's favorite oh look at that scrap paper okay so that gets glued I do have tear and tape right on my thumb get off of me okay that goes on here <laughs> now my question to everybody that's making their cards with me night tonight did you find the tops to your J? It's in your kit. Hi, Dawn. Okay, so let's take this. Oh, Sandy just got her pick tool, awesome. Okay, this is where it's important. Thanks for sharing, Julie, on vacation. Okay, so flip this over. That's gonna get glued on the inside. Right in your diamond, right in the center. Okay, something like, that is great. Then let's put our belly band back on. Oh, Angela's got her J dot, good. It's so little. <laughs> and then you get so mixed up in there with static electricity. Okay, we're almost done guys on this one. So you should have all your little bits and parts for your words. And so this is just one die. And oh shoot, we got a Stella. This is what we want a Stella. And this is better to Stella before you put it down. So let's get I just want to say that I love you, and I mean it, <laughs> from the bottom of my heart. So when I call my friend Mandy and I have to leave her a message, <laughs> I sing that to her first. <laughs> That's a song. <laughs> um, oh, Kay's got her J-top, good. Okay, good, good, good. A Jennifer, oh, perfect. So if you couldn't find the little piece of your J, what Jennifer said is she used the piece out of her Y. Yep, so you guys, I didn't pick out the innards of these. Sometimes they fell right out, but sometimes they stayed in. And so Jennifer just said she used the little in part, the middle part here of her, her Y, and that's perfect. Now that's my Stella that I didn't squeeze. I think this is the one I squeezed. So I'm afraid to squeeze it again for you guys because it'll go all over. <laughs> so I'm gonna squeeze it though, just a little bit. Ooh ah, uh, just a little bit. Okay, gotta get the J. All right, so I know a bunch of you did the art floral class with me. So you got some experience in putting these words down. <laughs> um, in class, some people chose to bring foam tape. 
foam sheets, I should say, and they die cut their own with the foam on the back. And so they raise theirs up a bit. Um, I'm gonna keep it flat. So what I would recommend doing is laying your words where you want them so that you have an idea. So I just want to say, like get them mapped out. Like here, you're creating your map. I don't wanna cover up my flower, so I put my two more over there. And then your say. So be aware that the little opal rounds are gonna go in the middles of your flowers. So kind of keep that aware of that. And then my little J toppers right there. So now as long as I don't bump this, life should be good. So I'm gonna take off one. And the dot is called a tittle. Anna, I didn't know that. The J dot is called a tittle. Very good. See, we learned something tonight. Okay, so this is how I glued the back of that. So I just ran some little lines and now I'm gonna try to get that back where I wanted it. So something like that. Now, because of using liquid glue, I have the ability to wiggle it a little bit. <laughs> wiggle it just a little bit. And then we're gonna do this one, little bits here. And then this will go right there. Saving room for my little opal round. Don't forget about that. Two. You guys, we're doing okay. It's two, two. We're two hours in. We got one card left. Fun folds classes always. You guys, one of my first fun folds class a year ago. So I started doing my lives back in March. And I did Christmas in July was fun folds. I think Christmas in July in July. Christmas? Yeah, the Christmas in July class, which was in July. I merged that with fun folds last year. It, I think it was three hours it took for that class. If you guys want some good fun folds from last year, I did the Christmas in July class. Oops. If you go to my page, Cards by Christine page, and search Christmas, you'll probably find it. I did, I did three awesome cards. So I'm just going to put a little dot for the tittle. Huh? And I'm going to use my picker-upper tool to get that so that I don't have to use my finger. Perfecto. I love it. Okay. There we go. Oh, we're not done. Hang on. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let me put some pimping in it. Okay, we have to get our opal rounds. So we're going to use, I don't know, you guys either got big, small, or a combination. So you got two of them. You can put one on each of your flower centers. There we go. All right, you guys. <laughs> Boom. Three done. Okay. Now, the last one is definitely not the hardest. I would have to say that Quiet Meadow was probably the hardest. Not hardest, but like just tedious. So here's our sample. So we got three cards done. Freesia, Polish Pink, and the Pale Papaya. So the last card, I got down to the last card, and I thought, ooh, I have two in colors left that I need to feature. Oh, what am I going to do? And then I thought, oh, we have plants. We have plants. Plants use greens. So, you guys, last but certainly not least is my, I think this one's my favorite. If I have to pick just one, I would pick the plant card, I think. So this is the one we're calling the fan card. Oh, I'm going to take a drink, you guys. I've been talking a while. Hang on. You like that last card. That's awesome. Good, good. Okay. Let's move this out of the way so you guys can see what we got going on. So the last one, I thought greens. So we have evening evergreen and soft succulent are the new two new ink colors. So this card rounds off the in color combinations so it's called a fan card because of this whole fanny thing right here and this actually folds down so in your kits you guys I um I think I had it set like this is how I probably I had it the last two folded and then you guys can fold the rest I just got it so that I told mom fold these two and then put the rest so it's flat so that at least your fit it fits in there um so a fan card, um, also potentially an accordion card, and it mail it does fit in an envelope, and this is actually so I didn't 
tape down this so you could see how it, it actually folds flat like this and it is eight and a half by five and a half. So it is a traditional size for a card base. All your scores though make it when you fold it, it's actually not. It actually is shorter than four, it's actually four and an eighth when it gets folded. So it's not quite, so your white mat on the back is three and seven eighths actually. And then your green mat is three and seven eighths wide, but still five and a quarter high, okay? So, all right, Julie, we'll catch you later. Okay, so where did I get my inspiration for this card? Angie Liner's on my team. She's a fabulous stamper as well. She did this card for the customer swap group. We had a fun fold um, month for the customer swap. She did three panels here, three, and then I only did two because I didn't want to cover up the plant back here, and it was less cutting, I'll be honest with you. And so, but hers shuts like this. And so she did that whale of a time set that was in the annual catalog with a little turtle here and then the seabed embossing folder. I added a back to mine so that you guys could write something. So thank you, Angie, for the inspiration. All right. And then everybody's plants are different. So if this one, you can see I've got the same one here and here, but this one and this one are different. And then if you look here, that one's different. That's different. So you guys, I'm going to get a pack of paper real quick so you can see what's, what I'm cooking. When I designed this, I kept the stamping to a limited amount. So the only stamping that's done is really on the back. So if you don't have the stamp set, you're okay. You could stamp a sentiment on the back and call it good and not even put a plant on the bottom and you're fine. You're going to be able to make this card without having stamps really. So the thing is with the pots and the plants is that everybody's got different and it was like piecing them together for everybody. So there's a piece of paper in the pack. So this is the Plentiful Plants DSP. This is a suite and there is a sheet that looks like this. It's all pots. So you got a combination of pots. Everybody's got enough to do two plants or two potted plants. So there's that one, that one, and that on this sheet. So that's one. And then there's a sheet of plants that I cut apart. And I don't have many left. This is basically what I had left of it. So I cut, so you guys start fussy cutting. While I'm talking, you gotta start fussy cutting. You gotta fussy cut out stuff. Okay, so you gotta fussy cut out whatever you got. I tried to make it that if you got this little dude right here, he, this one, he fits really cool in this pot right here. So I paired up a lot of those guys with this pot. And then these ones, <laughs> these ones, these guys, they kind of went in this pot or this pot. So this, people were calling this a dead fern thing. So some of you did get this. I guess apparently it's a dead fern. The dead fern basically went in this pot or this pot. So I matched up and paired up um, what I did that night, whatever, Thursday night after class, I paired everybody's stuff up. Okay. So, and then the other option though, that some people got where there's one more sheet, it's this sheet. So some of you got that one. Some of you got that. Some of you got that. I did not put any of these big daddies in because they would have been too monstrosity for the card. So some of you got these. So you should be starting to fussy cut. While I'm talking and jabbering, you guys start fussy cutting your plants out. I had to fussy cut. Now, there are dies that come with the set, but you guys might not have the dies. If you happen to have the dies and you happen to have the right die or the right imprint, you could use your dies to, to, to die cut. Um, this whole thing is done for you already. So that's this one, that, and that. So Anna cut those out for you. And I've already embossed your macrame embossing pool. You guys take it in. This is some of the new shimmer vellum ribbon or shimmer vellum paper. It's so awesome. It's like Stella on steroids. Somebody asked me if I Stella that. I was like, nope, that's the paper. It is just that shimmery. And it comes two sheets of 12 by 12 per each color. So each color of um, vellum has its own 12 by 12 sheet. And so you, in a pack, it's like 10 or 12 bucks. I can't remember if it's 11, 12 something. You get 10 sheets. Okay, so this is what Plentiful Plants looks like. And we're going to be using a couple of the stamps out of there. One that went really good with this, if you guys have happy thoughts at home, thinking of you, happy birthday or thank you, fit really good as well if you don't have um, the Plentiful Plants. The colors I use for ink 
our cinnamon cider and soft succulent. So the pot is that, and we're gonna do a little thank you card here. Um, yeah. Okay, so you guys, I am freezing myself out in here. I gotta turn the air conditioner down. Give me a second. I went from cooking to becoming a popsicle. Okay, so that's a little lowdown on everything. You also, in your kit, should have a couple or a few of these Genial Gems. They are in green and brown. Um, they are something new. So this is what a pack of them looks like. They're so pretty. They're in pale papaya and the soft succulent. And then the macrame. This is the new macrame folder. And it... It's so awesome. You guys have the paper in your hands if you got these kits from me. Just feel it, touch it. Like, oh my God, it's amazing. Okay, so I've basically gone through everything that should be in your kit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna assess, do a little stamping on the back here. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to assemble this bad boy. Okay, so you, you guys should know what you have in your kits. And I, I actually, I did not do my scoring because I wanna show you guys how to score. I have pre-done my fussy cutting though. So let's see what I gave myself. I have that one. Oh, and I got that one. Oh, I have three. I don't know why I have three. Maybe I cut an extra. So, okay, well, I can pick and choose what I want then. Um, you should have your little that thing and a pot. Oh, okay, cool beans. I was in my kit. I had one of these little guys extra. So you should have that. It wasn't in my kit, but that there I have it. Okay. We're gonna talk about these pieces of paper too. Okay, these are from the designer papers called In Good Taste. So just set those off to the side. This is that macrame embossed piece. So cool, that's the back of it. And then, okay, so let's talk about scoring. So we said it's an eight and a half by five and a half and it's scored at five eighths inch. Every five eighths inch, okay? So let's pull out the scoring tool because I use this on everybody's card. So I have it at five eighths inch and then it said one and a quarter. So this is every five eighths. So you take five eighths plus five eighths is one and a quarter. And then at one and a quarter plus five eighths is one and seven eighths. I have extra these little doohiggies to <laughs> go out further. <laughs> so, um, so I didn't have to do this every time. I lined all mine up. So I'm gonna just do these first couple. So I'm gonna grab the big end here. So I said right there, right there. I hate going over my hand to hold this, but you gotta do it like that. So then I, so two and a half is another five eighths. And then three and one eighth is another five eighths, three and three quarter. Okay, so those are the next ones. And then lastly is four and three eighths, which is that one. So every five eighths inch, you're gonna be putting a score line just like that. That's why how you guys got yours, that's all I did to make this magic happen. So this is a fun part of the card people enjoyed. You're gonna fold this way, so back and forth like this. So in your kits, I think you had them like that. I think I had my mom fold them like that, so that's how you got it. So you just have to keep it, keep it going. Keep her moving, okay? Take your bone folder, burnish this thick fan, okay? All right, let's get glue happy. So a lot of people asked about gluing this vellum and it, they were worried about if you could see the glue through it. It's so frosty and iridescent, you can use your liquid glue and I would recommend liquid glue. I would not recommend tape runner. Put glue all over here. You will not see it through, I promise. Watch this, when I put this down here, when you squish it good, you're not gonna see those little glue lines. Just flatten it really nice. You could use, um, if you have the stamp and seal plus, that would work, but you could use glue dots, but look, you can't see those lines on there. Now do not glue this down yet, okay? <laughs> we said get glue happy, but not too glue happy. So 
We're gonna work on this part next. So grab your Stella pens and you're gonna Stella your plants. So these are dyes that came out of the plentiful plants. Now, I'm gonna have to squeeze this again. A little bit afraid to. So this is, my Stella's filled with rubbing alcohol now. So it's a little bit, I should say she's runnier than normal. <laughs> and uh, uh, when you have her, when she stirs, starts out, it's more of a solution. And so she doesn't run out so fast when you squeeze her. <laughs> Sounds like a personal problem, right, Stella? Okay, so we're just Stella-ing these three pieces here. And we're going to assemble this. Okay, this is my trickery for this. Okay, grab a glue dot. A little glue dot. And put it on the front of your plant. That little green plant. And now that's going to stick to the back of the pot. So you just basically created a potted plant. Woohoo! Don't kill it now. You got to water it. <laughs> then what I did is put a little dot of glue right in the middle. This pot isn't quite big enough to hit the sides. So don't worry. I know it doesn't seem like we're securing it a lot. But one little dot of glue right there. Okay, put that over the top of your pot. The more glue you put there, the more it's gonna squeeze out. So just a little dot. So now we basically got that put together, okay? So you each have, you should each have, three inches of linen thread, okay? Not a lot, but you don't need a lot to make this happen. Fold your three inches of linen thread in half so you have a loop. The loop gets pushed down from the top through the hole and you're gonna grab it and now you're gonna widen it. You can see I'm widening it and I'm gonna put my little tails through the hole and bring the tails through and now you've looped it so that that little loop is on the front. If you start from the bottom, it's gonna look backwards. So you want that little loop on the front. Okay, so now we've got that ready. Flip that over and you're gonna put a dimensional and now I'm going to try to hit the dimensional over the top of my light green the succulent to help secure that more and one here now you're thinking well the pot still isn't really secured onto the cinnamon cider that's okay we're gonna secure it onto this piece right here so if we have our sample right here you can see that this is over about a good quarter of an inch and it's hanging down so it's like the plant oh man I told you it wasn't very secure, but we're going to fix it. it can't, do you guys see that? It's stuck to my finger. <laughs> okay, so right about here, okay? Now squish it good, and now the top part is going to help to secure the cinnamon cider hangy thing, okay, <laughs> with the, the, the pot hanger thing. So I'm going to take and fold my tails over and put tear and tape just over the top. I'm not doing a sandwich. This time I'm just gonna put it right over the top. All right, now that you have your tails behind here, now you can go ahead and glue this onto the inside right here, like so. Okay. That's how we got that guy down. All right, you have a piece of ribbon. So the ribbon is probably about six inches, I'm guessing, or maybe six and a half inches. It's just long enough to tuck your tails. So let's grab that, do this one. So this is the new succulent in color ribbon. So you guys, I got to use the, I figured out all of them except for the evergreen and the pink one, the polished pink. I didn't get to use those in these cards. So, so we're gonna put the ribbon down first. So let's grab the end and you're gonna prep. And this one, you're gonna do a tear and tape sandwich. So start on one end here and go up with that. And then this one's gonna go here. Oh, you guys see I go straight to using my nail instead of the pick tool. <laughs> okay, so center your ribbon 
between the edge and the fold. And then you're gonna bring that around the front and fold that in. Okay, so now you've just put the ribbon on the outside. Now you're gonna want to, what I would do is run this the length of it. This is what, this edge gets fold, oh, I just went really crooked. Oh man, let's see if I can pull that up. Okay, this edge gets folded down. So I'm, I'm gonna use tear and tape and liquid glue. So I didn't quite have it long enough. So we're gonna put a little more here. Now, don't glue it yet, <laughs> okay? We have to put our shelves together, or our tabletops together. Okay, tabletops, let's go over here. So I gotta think about how I did this. I know that I did not, my sample was a little bit longer. In class, for class, I noticed I cut them. I made you guys struggle a little, and I apologize. Um, I didn't cut them. I'm trying to remember what I cut them at. What happens is this gets glued in here, and it goes flush on the right and the bottom, but I didn't give you, I cut mine like an eighth of an inch longer, I think, so I've got a little more wiggle room. So. I'm gonna show you, I'm trying to think how I cut. If somebody's got their ruler and they can tell me what length I cut yours, I wanna show you how, because you don't have a lot of wiggle room. That says for, I think I cut the DSP at mm, three and a half. I, you guys, somebody will have to tell me what I cut yours at. I feel like I cut your evergreens at three and three quarters and then your DSPs at three and a half. If I had to guess, and just to show you how it's gonna work, because you guys, you gotta be very careful gluing these in, because you don't wanna get glue on the backs of your shelves or your tabletop. I think I cut the D, this evergreen at that, and I'm gonna make mine the same length that yours are. So this one was three and a half. Okay, so I think this is what you guys have. So you're going three and a half, green is three and a half. Okay, three and a half, let's see here. The green is three and a half, okay. So if that's three and a half, well, that can't be three and a half. It's gotta be longer than three and a half. So you're saying, Deb, your green was three and a half. I feel like the green, so ink, oh, I have, I can look. Hang on, you guys, hang on one second. I have seven people coming tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Saturday, so, Three, I cut everybody's at three. I just cut mine too short now. Haha, ha, that's okay. So three and three quarters. So this is exactly what you guys have. You have three and three quarters, and then the DSP is gotta be three and a half. So I'm cutting mine. Yeah, three and three quarters. Everybody's coming through at three and three quarters. Okay, so if yours Deb was three and a half, I oh, I hope it's not because three and three half is gonna be way too short. Okay three and three quarters. I think I cut them all at three and three quarters. Okay, so this is what we got. Just watch how we're gonna do this so that you don't get glue everywhere. So the three and three half, and then these are at three and a qu um, quarter maybe. So put adhesive or glue on the back of your designer paper ones first, and then those get glued to the shelf or the tabletop, whatever you wanna call it. I was trying to make it look like a tabletop. Okay, so you've got that and this. So you have two choices, what you wanna do. When I fold my card shut, mine comes to the edge here. So that will work, but we have to be very careful. At, we don't have a lot of wiggle room for the gluing. So if you look in this, you can see it only overhangs here by maybe a quarter of an inch. So you can't afford to put a lot of glue back here, okay? And the other option, so is not gluing a lot. The other option is to stick it in a little bit further, but then it doesn't come all the way to the end, okay? So I should have just cut them all a little bit longer, <laughs> but we, it's still good. Your cards are still gonna be fine. So this first one is okay. You can make this one work no problem. This one, what I would recommend doing is putting tear and tape all the way to the fold edge here. And this doesn't matter because you're going to be folding this shut. So how I would do is put tear and tape along the folded edge here. And the goal is to have it flush on the right and the bottom. 
So I'm lining it up on the right and the bottom, and now I'm adhering it right to that tear and tape. And now I'm gonna put a little bit of tear and tape right over the top of it too, so that this one is not coming out at all. This one, you guys got no problem. So when I take this tear and tape off, this is gonna get squeezed shut and it's gonna hide everything in here. No problema, problema. Okay, so watch. So you got your, you got your shelf in here. You've got no tape here, which is perfect. This just gets folded shut. Easy, right? Okay, so this last one we gotta be a little bit more careful with. Okay, so that's good. So, it's okay, so it's nice and clean and neat. Okay, don't get glue happy. <laughs> Last night, Mary got glue happy and she glued all these and hers <laughs> kind of got stuck shut. <laughs> all right, lastly, this guy. He needs to get glued. Now, so this is shut. So this little shelf goes in this next one here. But we want it to be flush on the right. We want it sitting on the top of this shelf. So like right there. Now, if we look though, that's how much room we have to work with, guys. We can make it work. You just gotta be very careful. So last night, Judy had her eighth inch tear and tape. It worked sweet as candy. So we're gonna try to do Judy's one eighth inch technique. <laughs> so I'm taking my quarter inch tear and tape. Now you could try this with liquid glue, but what I would do is take this quarter inch and put that super duper close to the edge here. Okay, so when we put this on here, when you put it that close to the edge, you're not gonna see it back there. But to reinforce it, I know I have a little bit more room. Oh my gosh, get off of there, so. <laughs> I have a little bit more room. It was like just a hair over, so I'm gonna take that other half of that tear and tape, and I'm going to reinforce it with a second. Now, you're not gonna be able to tape the top of this one. That's perfect. K use the super sticky double-sided tape for the shelves. That's perfect. Okay, so the trick for lining this up, guys, you're gonna shut this and kind of you gotta be coordinated a little bit. You gotta hold this, and what you're gonna do is line up the right and the the top of the bottom one and the bottom of the top one here, and kind of get it right where it needs to go, and then. You're just gonna shut it, <laughs> and, right? You want these top and bottoms to line up and this to line up, shut it. And then because I didn't have too much tape there, you just don't want adhesive anywhere here and here. And that's how that one's gonna stick, just like that. So what I gave you will work. You just have to not be glue happy. You have to be strategic glue happy, <laughs> okay? All right, so that's how your card is gonna sit like that. Now, you saw with Angie's card, she had a third shelf. When you go to make this card again in the future and you're gonna have a different pattern or design, you're gonna put your third shelf right there. And then the reason I didn't do a third shelf is I didn't want my plant getting covered up. So that third shelf gets put on this next one right here. Okay, cool beans and bagels. All right, plants. All right, so I'm gonna go with, so look at your plants, interchange them, see what works. Just know with this pot that this plant looks better, I think in it versus behind it. It doesn't look right behind it. Okay, don't try to glue it behind it. Okay, so, but we're also gonna get that little bit of green off. So this one's gonna get glued on the inside. And if you got that little succulent, that goes on the inside. Otherwise, I glue them to the back of the pot. Like, oh, come on, I'll show you. Like this one right here, you can't really see it because I made the pot go down, but I glued the plant below the pot. Okay, so this one's getting glued here, like it's coming out of the pot there. All right, so now though, lastly, put your plants on last. Don't put your plants on before you put your shelves on. Now that you have this like that, figure out which looks better. Like maybe one looks better there, one looks better there, or flip them around. Everybody's gonna have different ones. Just see what looks better for everybody. You know, does that look better? So. I'm actually gonna go with a little bit more of the, so I, uh, yeah, I like the, the cider, more of the cider over there, and then this one can go here. So I would put, just be careful, don't to put glue, um, 
Don't put glue too close to the top because you don't want to have glue hanging out over the top. So this one's going to go something like that. And you could do dimensionals if you want to. I'm not. I'm just going to go flat with them. Okay. So then that one's going to go here. So something like that. Okay. You guys, we're almost done. We have stamping and some gems to put on. So let's grab the gems. So there's these gems have big and small. Oh, look at here. I got some loosey-goosey ones here. So you have big and small ones. You either got too big and a small or you got too small and a big. One of you may be missing because I like looked at the spot where my mom was working on these later on and I found a little baby green one had snuck its way out. So if you're missing a little baby green one, it still looks good with two or I'll send you a little baby green one. <laughs> Just a disclaimer, I did find one of these little guys on the counter after my mom was done. <laughs> you guys, she did a really good job though. Honestly, like if, if somebody gave you 600 card kits to put together in less than like three, what was it, two and a half, it was like, she started at 10 o'clock on Thursday and she was done by Friday at five, okay? So, and yeah. So she did great. We got to give her a round of applause because I, ah, wow, she rocked it. Okay. We, she made it happen for me. <laughs> okay. So you're putting on a couple of those genial gems on the card. They're just hanging out in the, where the diamonds meet here. Okay. Stamping. Jennifer, you only had two. Okay. You got the lucky one. So if you want me to at some point send you a little gem I can, or if you just want to put two on your card, it will, I promise you it'll still look nice with two. <laughs> Either way. But yeah, I got over to the counter and I'm like, oh, oh, really? And I know it was difficult because of this little weird fold thing. And so even if you were holding these envelopes, um, they would want to sneak out. It was so dumb. <laughs> like the envelopes were so fat and thick. So can we try? Okay. So we're stamping some words. Okay. Okay. Good, Jennifer. I'm so happy you're good. Okay. That makes me happy. Okay. We're going to stamp a little note with the biggest thanks on the back at the top in cinnamon cider. Wonderful. Now, when you're stamping your pot, make sure when you stamp it, you don't stamp it too close to the edge because you gotta leave room for your leaf, your three leaves. So I'm gonna go over a hair like that. And then we have soft succulent. You guys, you would think that Fresh Freesia was probably my favorite in color, but I think that I would pick soft succulent. I think I would. Okay, this guy goes right here. And you see that I barely left a left room on that side. And that's it for this. Shannon's missing everything. <laughs> I love it. You're right, because I don't think you got these kits for a girl. <laughs> you missed out on this one. <laughs> oh, look at you guys. I, um, I have scrap paper here that I got to use up. Nobody knows that. <laughs> it's going to get covered up. All right, flip your card over. Let's get that piece of acetate off of there. Okay, and came back. <laughs> now that goes on the back here. Remember that this is not your traditional four by five and a quarter. It's three and seven eighths by five and a quarter. Okay. You're funny, Shannon. I love that. that made me laugh. <laughs> I laughed out loud. Okay, I love it. Okay, you guys, this is a fun card too. So honestly, you... It's not that hard of a fun fold. It really isn't. And it is like a wow card, I think. What you choose to put on your shelves or your waves, like, so let me bring Angie's back in here. Angie made water in the background and then she made it look like a sea life. And she had three panels, which is perfect because she wanted more water showing. I chose only two because I wanted to be able to see the hangy thing in the back. But it's just a matter of scoring layer some words you know words on the back and whatever you put on your shelf so this is a awesome fun fold like this is truly a fun fold to me so i think it's an amazing fun fold so thank you to angie liner for the inspiration on this one i, I just love it so you guys that's why i do swapping like i it, i love having the physical card in my possession to be able to case copy and share everything or creative um selectively edit things. I don't know. There's different ways to look at the casing, but yes, 
I swap to get ideas. I go onto my swap boards and I shop for ideas, <laughs> but they're free. I love it. Just like Pinterest. So you can go to Pinterest and get lots of ideas as well. Okay. You guys, we're almost at three hours. We're going to actually, I have drawings to do and we're going to be close. So I hope you guys aren't too starving Marvins. Okay. <laughs> so let's do a recap here. Pull in all the cards so you guys can see all of them. Which is your favorite? I'm curious. Last night, a lot of people said everyone. So I'm curious if you like everyone. Oh, what is your favorite? Otherwise, I think I'm partial to this one. I just love that sh shimmer vellum paper. You guys are going to love it when you get your hands on it. I love the exploding one. I, like, I love the soft simplicity of this one. Like, you can think of somebody that would love that. I mean, somebody would love all these cards. You can find happy homes for all of them. So, oh my gosh, they're all so neat, right, Ethel? I agree with you. Okay, so these are going to be given away, you guys. What you have to do is comment. The commenting is what gets your name in for the drawings for when I do my card classes. Jennifer likes pink. Janet likes pink. Um, the first one we made was the pink one and the black one, Shannon. This was the first one that we made. Um, last night, a couple people said the pink one was their favorite too. So you guys, yeah, liking and or not like commenting, commenting when you see, I can get your names and put them in for the drawing. Um, so make sure you're commenting. They're awesome. So, okay. You don't have to comment that they're awesome, but just commenting is awesome. <laughs> so, all right. So let's grab out some prizes for you guys here so I can announce some winners. Okay, you guys, thanks for staying tuned for the whole time. I love it. So, um, Lynn likes the exploding and the butterfly. Stacy likes pink. You guys are liking the pink. I love it. Arliss has no favorites. I think she likes them all. Sandy likes all four. Awesome. Okay, so what I've got is six things here. So, the card kits. You guys, this is like I've always done. I do the drawing based off of the names of who's commenting. And so Kelly did these paper pumpkin cards two weeks ago, I believe. And so I have winners on the back that I wrote down. So we'll do that. And then for these three prizes, I'm going to take the 26 people. They all have numbers next to them. All the 26 that placed orders will be put into the drawing. And then when they take their next class with me is when I will put the prize in with their package. So cool. Cool. Um... All right, so winner, winner, chicken dinner. Burr, burr. Okay, Janet loves my tan. I feel like I look in the camera and it looks like my arms are so dark. <laughs> yes. Oh, but now you like it, Sandy. My work here is done. When you tell me that, I can say, well, now my work here is done. Okay, so this one is actually my favorite, I think, out of all the paper pump, the three paper pumpkin ones. Winner, winner, chicken dinner is Linda Brady. Your name was drawn for this card. I do not have your address, so you're going to have to make sure you get that to me. And the crazy thing is that there were two Bradys that were commenting and two Bradys won for tonight. So it was here, Margaret Brady. And so I'm really curious. Congratulations, brr, Margaret Brady. So are you guys sisters? <laughs> I thought it was so crazy. What a coincidence that the two Bradys won. It was it's awesome. But I don't have either one of your addresses. So, all right. And winner, 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 chicken dinner, the last one. It's Faye Godby, and I think that she's not on right now, but Faye, I have your address. You won this one. Oh, look at she made a cutesy little bow there. You guys, I didn't even like take these all in yet. <laughs> all right, so congratulations to, to Faye. I have your address, so I will be mailing. Oh, you have a package going out tomorrow. I will actually put it in with your package. Okay, so I'm gonna have to move away from my comments, and I'm gonna pull up random number generator. The Brady Bunch, right, Kathy? I love it. Okay, so. I have my, this is my class sign-up sheet, guys. So you know when you reach out to me and you sign up for a class, either through my website or just emailing or however, I have every class listed and I put your name and I put if you've paid or you order. That's my me method to my madness. So I put numbers next to all the people who ordered so I can go back and check numbers. So I've already done that. So I had 26 people that placed orders for this class specifically. And I'm going to go to rant and I've got these three prizes. You're not going to get to pick. <laughs> I'm picking for you. So you don't have to worry about commenting. You're just going to get one of these prizes. I'm going to keep it simple on myself versus trying to find comments and look at them. So we need to go to random number generator. We're going to put in 26 people and we're going to hit generate number nine. Okay. Let's get a post-it note here. Hang on, I gotta keep track. So we have number nine, and number nine is on the front side. Number nine is Cheryl Del Ponte. 
All right, Cheryl, you were at class last night. Congratulations. You are a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh my goodness, number one. What are the odds that number one gets picked? I, I, I always hate, oh, Jill Butson. Jill, you are at, look at that. We got two different classes. Now, hopefully we get a number from the online. Jill, okay, and then number 10. Let's go back. It must be on the front side here. Diane Bogenhagen, you're the next winner. Okay, congratulations. We had number nine, number one, and number 10. So I will be picking what prizes go to who. And it was just a way for me to, let's skip back in here. Okay, so you guys, I mentioned early on that I need to start cleaning house out of stuff that I get that is retired after the end of a catalog because I'm usually into the next catalog. And then I get boxes and instead of doing a buy one get one sale, I said I'm going to start giving away prizes to the people who place orders for classes because that's the way I get extra Stampin' Up! goodies. So so basically when people place orders, I get host credit and then I use that to buy or I buy it myself because I just think I need it. <laughs> so all right, so those are the three lucky winners for this class. And so every class that I do, um, they'll be winners for the people. So for the paper pumpkin night, how it works is if you're a paper pumpkin subscriber for me, I will be doing a drawing even the night that I do the paper pumpkins. And so it'll be based off of who has a paper pumpkin subscription through me. So yay. Um, what is the name of the fold for the second card? Okay. The second card we use quiet meadow. Um, I think Sandy called it a matchbox fold, but I also call it a pocket fold. So it could be like a pocket matchbook fold. <laughs> How does that sound? Okay, uh, um, let's see here. Okay, so I think I got through everything on my list. And um, if you missed Technique Thursday, make sure to catch Kelly's Technique Thursday. And then next week, what's on the docket for next week? Tip Tuesday, watch for that, Technique Thursday. And then Thursday night will be game night. You guys, I'm going to have to check emails, but before I started the night, I had three sets left with goodie bags. So I'm looking for three people, and I think the ink, paper, scissors is accounted for. So I have to double check notes when I get off of here. So, but yes, Jeannie, congratulations to all of the winners, everybody that took the class with me, and everybody who watched me, you're all winners <laughs> in my book. So I appreciate all the love and support that you guys give me and all the flexibility with the kits. You guys are amazing. I... I appreciate that so much and I appreciate all of you guys and it's so good to be back. I feel like it's been forever since we had a class together and it really hasn't, it's been four weeks. So whew, we made it through, good job. Yay to everybody. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, lots of sunshine and love and hugs to you. Have a good rest of your week and weekend and we'll see you next week. Love you guys, bye.